Where'd my pen go? I have a sharpie. No, I need it for the different angles. Okay. I got a pencil. <laughs> another pen. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, really? That's what was. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's... I had one. You had my one. And then, did you steal another one? I thought I had another. Oh, we do. Oh, one yeah, too. no, that's because it's These my These are the good ones. Yeah. <laughs> if that's awesome. my pen, make sure that comes back to me. All right. Can't guarantee. <laughs> Oh my god. Mm -hmm. You're getting older. I know my mom Can't did it so it. tiny. We I I got Do you want me to write bib numbers in like larger font? No, I can see it. It just it's blurry. What's the matter? Oh, look how small it is. I need to write. I need space to write. I always just, when it's so small, I do it like right on that right corner here. and then right there and then I just write bit number and last. I go up towards the red one. Right, right there is good.
So Hayden's saying that this one needs to come down even another, further. Another foot. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just relaying a message. And he says he doesn't really care about Jaeger. Kill the Jaeger and then drop the saddle boy. Okay, copy, stand by. They're eyeballing it right now, just so you know. A little bit more down? I don't think so right now. Um, working on a magnet. Go.
Yeah, Hayden, we're waiting for a course clear. We should be close. Are we rolling on this thing? Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. Josh is down there? I don't see anybody. Michael? Michael, just wait for uh, Johnny to get a little further. We just need a course clear. No, we're good, Matt Barrett. We're going to do POV as soon as we get John down there to give us a course, course clear. Then we need athletes. Yeah, are there girls up there? Nope. So we're going to Yeah. Birch, and uh, we're going to have a few up here. Yeah, we're both on this. Barrett, the TV, or anybody that can make an announcement? Can you make an announcement that everybody that's racing for the girls should be at the start? He wants to just go. There you go. For the guys. Race for the Barrett. So, Lady Hawk, run until the round of 16. Why are we? Okay. Go ahead, Barrett. Oh, yeah. Just turn it down here. No worries. Why are we good for Michael? Oh, yeah. Are we waiting on John? <sighs> Michael, don't go. Michael, don't go. Ready? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Matt, John. Top to bottom like this. Yep. You guys at the start will have the clear eyes on the uh, on to the turn. Okay. Copy, I got it. Are we good down there? We're good. Okay. Sure you're good. Clear from the finish to the alley. Go. Okay, here we go. POV, Michael Ankeny. All right, we're standing up here in the start. Red course. It's important to not go by the sound, but by the lights. We've got this Christmas tree to the right, and uh, it's all about time. you got to time it right, so as soon as it does light up. All right, so here, we're going to push back, come close, and it's open. And then establish a good line. You're not going to win it up here. Good line up here. And then absorb it.
Say something like that. I'll get on the headset. You hear me okay? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> exactly what I was thinking. That's we are. Probably we have about twelve right now. Well I got a strum too as well. So if you have the first pairing and get them in the game. That's
Good one, guys. Yep, you're on blue, second pair. <laughs> what do you got up there? You got, you got a pair in there? Thank you. Yeah, we got the camera. Yeah. 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 We're really filtering it for us. Weekend long, Kev. We got so two heavy gauges, a little bit of gates. You can watch them close the gates if you're looking at the live uh, screen right now. It's Matt Rogers up there, my coach uh, chef. He made some meatballs. Uh, Caesar salad last night in their condo with the whole team. So Matt closing yeah. the doors. Randy Patson will be our starter. So the athletes get behind the doors. You can't see it in this picture, but there's a big kickboard that you put your tails against. So they'll rock back on their tails and then watch the drag lights out front. It goes five lights, yellow to green. The doors open up simultaneously, and out on course they go. Yesterday was qualifying. When those doors open, the clock starts. Now the clock starts when the first athlete crosses the finish line. The second one crosses the finish line, stops the clock. That's where we get our differential from. So differentials uh, on each run, they will go back and switch courses, get another shot at the opposite course. We have a maximum differential, so if, say if you you know, lose by two seconds or you DQ or whatever the case may be. The max is one second that you have to make up. That's a serious challenge. So looking forward to watching the athletes. The, the finish is super crucial too, as always to make that last minute stretch to get across the, the line before your competitor. Two jumps in the course today, four to five foot jumps. All our banners are set across underneath those jumps to So they're in the gate now. We have a pair of forerunners. Forerunners. I see G something on the right. My eyes are not that good. And Mr. CB on the blue course. Will on blue. We'll call him CB Vaughn's distant so uncle. These two young athletes are from Central Division. We rode up the mountain this morning. So CJ in will on course they're super excited to be out here yeah wouldn't you be kev oh yeah at that age you kidding me so we first started the tour back in 2017 i brought a bunch of my athletes up to four run at our first race at sunday river and they were super excited we trained at duel all week long I had two, a set of twins kids weren't any more than five two clear <laughs> the high clear so the bros are watching yeah. them go out and start. They go, who are these kids? Who are these kids? They're training like yeah. these kids. And, and, and you know, that this could be the linchpin for these athletes. For CJ and Will, this may be the linchpin. It's, it starts to explode their career and say, I skied here at the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships and started the whole thing off. I think we, we should get an opportunity to do that, Kevin. So you want to talk about an opportunity yeah. for four running? Yeah. The great Phil and Steve Mayer are going to battle head to head today. What? After the round of 32 for the yes! men. Yes! Phil That's and exciting. Steve Mayer, legends. So I, super cool. I brought my photo from 1989 Alpine Meadows from the World Pro Ski Tour. When they were there, I got it here. I had a mullet. They still didn't have a lot of hair. They're still better <laughs> skiers than I. Oh, God. <laughs> so wait for these two young athletes to check the timing for us. Part of the job of the four runners to make sure when they cross the finish line we start the clock second one across stops the clock that's your differential so in pro ski racing now after the first run we send it back to the top switch courses the doors will then open according to your differential on the first run which makes it super easy to follow the first guy across the finish line on the second run is your winner no questions asked so you'll see on that second run when the lights go the guy with the Advantage, his lights will start first, but we'll go over that and make it clear as we work our way through the rounds. 
Two runs for the men in the round of 32, and then finishing that second run for the men in the round of 32, the ladies will start with their round of 60. Equal money, 20 grand for the top step of the podium. So big, Whoa. big green Whoa. bags. Isn't that 10% rule tonight at the bar? Right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that. Keep going yeah, forward. Prospects on that screen. Seiko since 1881. That was the same year as the, the, the shootout at the OK Corral, did you know? But the Seiko watches, the winners today and throughout the season, walk away with the new Seiko watch. Aaron Milzinski is running out of wrist room right as, now. As is Christian Sovac. As is Sovac, yeah. So while we're on that, talking about the sponsors up there, Mazda get first tracks. I was getting first tracks with the Mazda CX-50 when we arrived here with all that new snow. Not an issue for that car, which is plowing six, eight, ten inches of snow, and our forerunners out on course. Did you stick your head out the window to get face shots of that CX-50? <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. All right, the forerunners here. It was, it's Will on the blue course. That's the blue panels on your left-hand side. CJ, not CJ Mueller, the legendary speed skier, but CJ, I'm going fast here in Dallas on the red course. What do you see, Clarky? So Will, I believe, is a U18 now. He's 16 years old, and CJ is still a U14. So he's, I believe, 15 years old, coming from Central Division in Michigan. A couple of good, solid ski racers here. Let's see how he handles the jumps here. No problem. Almost as good as Michael Ankeny over that jump. Yeah, <laughs> smooth step down. Will's across the front line first. Same with CJ. We getting some times? Yep. They Will wins it by 2.240 seconds, 2.2. So that's the differential clock working perfectly. So again, you'll be able to see it on the board as we go through the round. Uh-oh. Okay. Franz Weber is oh. in the house. Oh. Morning, yeah. Franz. Franz has got his hands on my um, neck. Time for a massage. Franz, how was the morning skiing out there at the house? That uh, was fantastic. Conditions are perfect. Think about you get to ski with all the legends. Phil and Steve Mayer, Peekaboo Street, Tamara McKinney, Clem Reed. You name it, Beth Ligeti. Just an awesome morning. Fantastic. That's Franz, Franz Weber, one of the fastest men on skis. You can see him in all orange today. Looks like a, a Caltrans construction worker. He'll be signing autographs from 3.30 to 3.31. Find him. Always a pleasure to have him here in the mix. <laughs> in his so, old orange kit. He'll be changing tires on the roadside. Back in the 90s when I was announced at the Tour, France was always on tour with us. Guy loves skiing more than anybody. He'd get eliminated and he'd just ski and ski and ski all day. Ski, ski, ski. Yeah, I got I got to be sitting there in the booth. Stories. Yeah, sitting we, there in the booth watching him just lap after lap after lap. There's very few people that have the passion for skiing. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about it, but he's got a few years on me. Franz used to be the director of skiing at the resort of Squaw Creek in, in, uh, in Squaw back in the day. And he was the first one to bring the powder plus atomic skis over those real thick ones, right? He's like, you must try these. These are fantastic. <laughs> and at the time, no one wanted to ski at 170 or 175. It was a 210, 210 era. You got on those things and they blew through that Tahoe snow like nothing. And I'm like, Franz, you are on to something. Yes, yes I am. Game changer. <laughs> Total game changer. That was the fat ski before the, the uh, fat ski was the fat ski. But uh, that was then. This is now. Good to have you here. Taos Ski Valley, New Mexico. Today is Good Friday, March 29th. Amen, hallelujah. And uh, we're going to do this again tomorrow if by chance you uh, have to go do something today. Basically, we're doing a rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, tomorrow we switch You're to good. GS. But let's talk about the folks out of the right, snow right. on our midway. You can find our friends nope. from Jaeger out up. there. Oh, boy. Okay, sorry. Right yeah. alongside yeah. Jaeger, Revo, the official eyewear and goggles to the World Pro Ski it. Tour. Got my Bodie Miller goggles. Love those goggles. Right alongside the World Pro Ski Tour merchandise tent. And you. the gals from Celsius stop okay. down. Got my Celsius in me first thing this okay, morning. Gentlemen, Uncle Lee, you're holding a, a, a can of lemon lime. Uh, it's refreshing. It's essential energy, accelerates okay. metabolism, and burns body fat. I need all those things. I need energy. I need my metabolizing metabolism. And I need the body fat burn. So another pair of forerunners ready to go. I hear red course ready, blue course ready. Yeah. Oh, know. the kid, the orange helmet. I was watching him earlier. He was in his shorts. He was he was visualizing the course based on he was skiing yesterday. I think both these guys were skiing the junior division yesterday, getting a feel for uh, how it's looking today under sunny with some clouds floating over as well. Off the top, jump. Nicely jump. These young athletes. So while we're watching these guys. We'll talk about some of our other sponsors. Our friends from, oh, from DNA Vibe. 
So it's intelligent light therapy, and I used it extensively last year rehabbing. And of course, Hal Kuhn from Tough Shed. We got a Tough Shed bank on the desk in here. If you come in here and you Cohen house, you have to put money in the Tough Shed account. <laughs> I got my change. <laughs> I'm deciding where all that money is going to go. But Hal's got a Tough Shed out on the snow. All the Mazdas are positioned around the lodge here, up under snow, underneath the scoreboard. So stop by. Visit our friends from DNA Vibe. Nice job by the young man that crossed the finish line. I like the visualization of the skier in the orange helmet that just charged on down. Well done. And speaking of legendary skiers, Bodie Miller has created a new ski company with uh, the help of many others, including Andy Worth, who's running the show. Uh, Peak Skis. You folks that happen to be watching online and you folks that are watching live here, go on to World Pro Ski Tour Facebook page and sign up for a free pair of peak skis. We're giving one away each day. All right, we're ready to rock and roll. It's going to be two dudes up in the course, uh, ready to go. It's going to be Philip Forcheck representing Chechia, the Czech Republic, the 26-year-old. And he's on course along with Simon Peer. Better known as Squishy. He's on the blue course. This one should be all Philip, but you never know in head-to-head -head racing, Kev. So Forcheck predictably gets the jump on him. Seasoned veteran, your fastest pro on the snow yesterday, just annihilating the field by over a second. So he's going to put it in coast. Simon Spear made the, made the field amongst a bunch of people that DNF. He found himself in there because he hiked so smart. Skiing, four check, your number one qualifier. Coming to the bottom jump like butter. Touching down, what a perfect jump they built here. The cat drivers worked hard. So across the line, we'll go four check first, your fastest qualifier. Simone Spear was 32nd, he'll cross the line. So the maximum differential will be handed out there one second. Hey, Kev, did you know Simon Spears' birthday was yesterday? Everyone say happy birthday on three. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Simon. Nice job. That was job. a birthday present yesterday, making the field. That so. was indeed. Made it in 32. So let's move on. We got Raphael Hauser from Ulster, the 26-year-old. He's on the red course looking up. And Miha Kuhner. That's it. One of our eldest competitors at 33 years of age. Yeah, his girlfriend, uh, wife, is in the mix. His good luck charm. She's missed the last two events. Let's see what happens here. Cooner. Uh, track they go. Cooner on the blue course side. Hauser on the red. Cooner made it to the second step of the podium here last year out in front of Hauser. Cooner's got some experience coming out from behind the start doors as the Austrian Hauser starts to close the gap a little bit into the flat section they go. You really get got to power the ski, get some energy out of the ski to make the turn. So blue course pulls away, but Hauser knows when they make the turn on that left foot to go over the jump, he'll make up some grounds. Cooner out in front, drops into the bullet over the bottom jump. And just, oh, no! wow, wow, we moved, a, we lost a shot there. I don't know what happened, but when we look back up, oh, he without the ski. He, he took a face plant right there, the ski came off. Whether he, I don't know what. Happened. Wow, we're gonna take another peek at that. Out. Let's do a rerun on that. Yeah, just on his, on that. Uh, here it is. Here, here it looks go. like the ski kind of just shoots off. Oh. oh, and he got his hands in front know of if him. It broke, or if the, or if he just pre-released. But I think that was a pre-release because the binding's still intact, and that's a thumper right there. So Gunnar wasn't expecting that, and looked like it knocked the wind out of him. He took a pretty hard hit there when he lost that ski. Tough break for Gunnar. Yeah, that'll put him in uh, in a tough position going to the next one. Hasser, newcomer to the game, born in Tyrol, Austria. He's a cop and a current Austrian national team member, but uh, right now, Miha Gunnar catching his breath. When he gets down into the finish, folks, give him a round of applause. That's uh, obviously the crash, unfortunate crash of the day. So, tough break for Gunnar. A good, strong start there. Those guys were 16th and 17th in their qualifying efforts. Okay, to the top we go. Current U.S. ski team member, George Steffi, out of New Hampshire, over on the red course. Went to Stratton Mountain School in Dartmouth. He's going up against a guy from Garmisch, Germany, Adrian Messen, newcomer to the World Pro Ski Tour. Came out of the World Racing Academy. And look at that hair, the locks flowing up there. So we're waiting for these guys to... Big Good props to all our cameramen today, ready. the entire tech team. It's being, all these things are wired into a truck and this is being shown live around the world. And they're on course. Here we go, out on track they come. German a good strong start. Both these guys, rookies on tour, coming behind the start gate. Looks like the German got a little bit of an edge of George, George Steffi, US ski team member. So they qualified respectively. George was ninth 
and Lester was 24th. George trailing now. So we make the turn here. The German will get the advantage on the blue course side as they make that turn. George Steffi has to stay focused on his own course because he'll get that advantage back at the red. But the German had the advantage through the turn over the bottom jump. We'll go Messi over there first. Here comes Steffi starting to close the gap a little bit. It's going to be the German across the line first. And the differential is point one two seven for Mason. Point two seven. Point one two seven. So a tenth of a second faster by Adri from Garmisch, Germany. His first show showing here, along with Steffi, they'll go back up and swap courses. Let's set our sights back to the top. We have a great Britain athlete by the name of Billy Major out of London, 27 years of age. He's going to be on the red course. And the fast man, Christian Sovak, who's already earned $28,000 on tour this year, he's on the blue course representing Norway. So Randy Patson up there, ready. official starter. He Blue course ready. Good to have Randy out. back. Calls out the gates and the lights go from yellow to green. Open simultaneously, about a track they will go. Major over on the red course side. A little bit of a trail. As they drop down, Sobek with the number one throw on tour right now. Sobek leads the point standings with 130. Over Michael Ankenes, he's out in front here. And the psychological game starts as you make the turn and you watch the athlete on the blue course pull away. Just have to stay focused down through the alley. Good and hard and faster there as Sobek, the tour leader, touches down off this job jump with about a half a gate lead. Let's see what the differential is. It's all Sobek at the line, crosses the line. Wins it by 0 .807. 0.807, Uncle Lee. No Surprise there for a guy who's got two firsts and two seconds so far this year. Again, nearing $30,000 in cold, hard American cash. The Norwegian likes the way that fits in his bank account. Billy Major from Great Britain, 13th in the Kitzbühel Slalom this year. So we know he's no slacker. Good course ready. Now, let's go back Good up top. Ready. We got ourselves Jan Zabistran from the Czech Republic, or Czechia, and Simon Breifos Kamerlander, previous tour champion. It's the Czech on the red and Simon on the blue. So Camelander gets the jump out of the start. Down the pitch they go. Camelander starting to trail now. Camelander blew his skis. Oh, oh hang in there. On the red course side. He's going to stay in and finish. Camelander got to take advantage of that. He has the momentum coming into the flat section before they make the turn. Stay with the Damastrand trying to get it back now. Camelander struggled to get some speed up the top part of the course. On the blue course now with the advantage as they make the turn. This is where Jack will get the... Difference back. He's starting alongside. Cavaliers. They cross, cross the finish line. Going to cross first. Oh, oh, big mistake in making it up there. Winning the run is Jan by 0. 0.428. 0. 0.428. Now that is what we call tenacity. You get in the back seat, you almost blow out, and then you make a recovery. Jan Zabistan from Chechia making it. Look at this right here, Kev. He is charging and then gets caught in that rug, Blue gets thrown ready. in the back seat, says, oh, I'm gonna put my hand down and check my speed and keep this rhythm rolling. Wow, good stuff. Hey, hey. Ready to start with Leger and River Radimus out on track they go. Radimus over the blue course side, gets a good strong start over the French, but down the pitch they go. It's Radimus with the lead, arcing him out there, getting to the top of the turn, energy out of the ski, high edge angle into the jump. He got to set up and get the stones back to the stone as quick as possible. It's still Radimus with the advantage, with the Frenchman trailing into the turn. Radimus picks up that fast pace, leaving the Frenchman behind, but he knows he's going to get a little bit back as they go over the bottom jump. Radimus still out front. Oh, the Frenchman, all kinds of trouble up there, throwing it away up there. It's going to be Radimus with a huge lead. His first of two runs will take the max differential. Jay stands it up and across the finish line to go. So, win for Radimus, 1.0 max differential. A Taos representative there, Mr. River Rodham is third place at Palisades Tahoe earlier this season. Crowd went wild there. Crowd's going wild here today. Lagier, you got your work cut out in the next round. All right, we're going, Ang. Angerer and Cinarelli, we're firing them right out of here in this first round of the round of 32. Long day of ski, ski racing. The Italian over the blue course side, the Austrian. Both rookies on tour waiting for the start. Kate says we look behind the backdrop. Kachina looking good up there. Going to open up today, Uncle Lee. Be yeah. Be up there. Good for good for hiking. So it's going to be you got to earn your turns up there. But the the uh, the Frenchman Enzo Cenarelli at 23 Red years ready. young. Blue course now, ready. He's 24. Had a birthday last week. He's going to go up against Benny Anger, the Austrian. The lights are gold green. Out on track they come. Pretty even start. Down the pitch they go. 
It's the Austrian on the red court side. Trails the Frenchman. Frenchman charging down the pitch. Getting some good energy. Keeping that pressure and ski at the top of the turn. Into the jump they go. Cruz will get the skis back down the snow as quick as possible. Is Cinarelli pulls away on the loose course side. The Austrian trying to stay focused on his own course as they make the turn through the alley. They go out in front. Is Cinarelli, the Frenchman, stretching his lead over the bottom jump. And look at the way this jump was built. Just perfect skis. Touch down in the snow. Makes it look simple. Cinarelli trying to make up the difference across the line. They go. So Cinarelli with a 2 4 5 advantage. 2 4 5. Is it? Angerer tried to stay focused, close that gap a little to bottom, hopefully. That's it, Cinarelli and Angerer making it happen. They'll go back up top. You're getting for a feel, a feel for how this works. Tell your friends and family, Facebook, Red it's on Live World Pro Ski Tour. Let's yep. go now with Reto Schmidiger. Had great success here last year. He's on the blue course, and Andreas Smith from the Woodwood. Skiing oh. for UNR is on course. They go, getting a strong jump on that blue course side. A little bit of a side slip there, giving up some Ground, but out front, skiing strong in the first of the two runs. It's Reto Smittinger looking fast here. Again, the Andreas Smith, the rookie from Norway, over on the red. So Smittinger working it, getting some energy out of the ski, making the turn. to the section back the alley to go. Smittinger stretches it out, trouble on the red course side with Smith losing the outside ski there. But it's all Reto Smittinger qualified fourth yesterday. Andreas was 29th in the qualifying rounds. Cross the line to go Smittinger with a 1.100. He'll get the max differential, max differential there. Yep. So great work last year by Schmidiger out here. And nice to have the 33-year-old back in the mix. 31-year-old, excuse me. And uh, Smith. Is uh, his dad is actually from Taos, so probably rooting him on. Let's go up top now. Red Roman course, Frost yep. is on the Blue red course, course. Yep. and Arnold Bosset from Switzerland, 25 years of age. He's a speed guy. He took seventh in Super G in Kitzbühel this year, and he's on course with Frost right now. So Frost, your third fastest qualifier over the red course side. A little bit of a jump, but three even down the pitch. He said he qualified in 30th. So. Steady doing a good job here, keeping it real with Frost. He's your third quickest qualifier. So Frost on that red course side. Now, he's, oh, he's all kinds of trouble nice on the blue, save. but then he gives it away and oh. misses the gate. Max differential goes to Frost. He was putting the pressure on Frost there. Threw it all the way in the turn. That is the money gate on that blue course side. We see so many guys yesterday go out on that gate. It's just a little bit of a fall away, and it's, it's miles of flat up there. And you drop a shoulder in, and quickly you can get behind. So Frost. With a one second advantage, the max differential going to Roman Frost, your third quick to qualify. Nice job, Roman. You can take a peek back, uh, looking back at it one more time. Into the back seat, trying to hold on for dear life, and just says, ah, my rhythm's all off now. I'm not going to make that gate. And that was it for both heads. That's what happens with those 165 slalom skis. If you don't keep the pressure centered on the ski, you get back on that tail, it will launch it. We saw it happen yesterday. We'll see it more today as we wait for the next pair. Patrick Kinney and Kiefer Christensen up next. Patrick from my home ski area. New Hampshire. Where he learned to race, Atatash. Patrick was 19th in qualifier, Kiefer Christensen was 14th, so. I understand, Kev, that there was a fair amount of snow right ready. when you left Blue course ready. Uh, Maine. <laughs> oh my God, no snow on the ground, 39 inches. Let's go back to the racing now. Patrick Kenny on the right course side, coming out on track against Kiefer Christensen. Down the pitch they go. Patrick Kenny, again on the right course side, a little bit of an advantage over Christensen. Member of the US ski team, had a great season, was here last year, loves it here with Patrick Kenny. Out in front, the Hampshire boy. US ski team member putting the hammer down over Kiefer Christensen, their first of two runs. Kenny gets some good energy out of the ski as they make the turn. This is where Kiefer Christensen pull alongside. Kenny gets some juice out of the skis, starts to turn it back when they go around the turn of the red course. It evens out, and Kenny with a strong lead in the first of two runs in the round of 32 across the line goes Kenny. And he will win the run with a max differential. 1-0-0 zero, zero for Patrick Kenny. Good start for Kenny. So one second advantage. Well, both Kenny. these guys attended Burke Mountain Academy. One went to Dartmouth, one went to UNH. And Keeper Christensen spent some time at UNR. Nice work, boys. Head back up to the top. We'll go on now with Luis Fossa and Eric Reed, the Battle of Norway versus Canada. And it's going to be Mr. Reed on the blue course, Fossa on the red. So waiting for Randy Fatson up there. Matt Rogers, your starter and starter assistant, says 
We look at these guys focus on the course. Don't forget to visit our Midway. We got all kinds of swag for the World Pro Ski Tour. The folks from Taos have some cool Taos branded items out there, water bottles, and our friends yeah. from DNA Vibe. Luke so here we go, the cadence begins now on Fowles and Reed. Reed over the blue course side. Second year back here. Oh, Fowles all kinds of trouble. Gets left standing up there. So Fowles down the red course side, trailing Eric Reed down the pitch. They go, Reed looking strong, clean and smooth, pressure at the top of the turn. Excellent surface that they prepared out here for us. Be a long day, it's gonna get pounded for both men and women running so reed with the advantage the canadian goes into pro alley pulling away on the blue course side stretching the lead out looks like this could be another max differential reed was 22nd in qualifying and bowser was 11th reed getting on the stride here crossing the finish line reed wins a point at 903 for eric reed Point nine zero three. reed walked away victorious with twenty thousand bucks in his pocket last year he liked the way that felt his brother was in the mix jeffrey who's not here Dad had rooting him on as his good luck charm. So one more race in this round of 32, and he'll move on to 16. Luke Horse ready. Next up, we have a Switzerland competitor up against USA. It's going to be Tange Neff. Oh, on the red, he'll be on the red course. Sam Ness from Belgium, actually, is on the blue. Here we go. Looks like Sam got the jump coming out of the start. Neff had a big old explosion yesterday in qualifying. Neff fought, starting to really trail now as Sam Mays pulls away at midsection of the course on that blue side, getting a good snap out of the ski. You see the energy once they release that edge. Ski float for a minute before you set the next edge. Good way to generate speed. You've got to use the tools in the toolbox, and that's where you really can juice it. So, leading on the blue course side, still going to be Sam across the finish line. He's going to have the advantage. We'll go to the clock as Sam wins the run by .595 for Sam Mays. At a boy, Sammy, making it across ahead of Tenge. Good looking racing there. It's Tenge Neff with one F from Switzerland. And Sam Ness, you've got the advantage as you head back up top. Remember, this is the round of 32 men. They're gonna get, everybody's going to get two runs, and then we'll chop it down to 16. Let's go up to the top once again. It's time for Alexander Schmid. He'll be on the red course, right hand side looking up the German. At 29 years young, we'll go against the Norwegian Ivor Ness. Left oh, Ness yes. standing there as he rips it out of the start. Finnegan Ness trying to figure out the start doors. Both these guys rookies. But looks like the German got it figured out. Comes out strong out of the start doors. Two 1,200 pound magnets holding those doors closed. He got to time it just right, and he did. First the two runs in the round of 32. The German out front, but they make the turn here. Ness will close the gap a little bit, see if he can gain some ground. Yes, he is. So Schmidt, 27th, seventh in qualifying. So Ness putting the pressure on. It's going to be Schmidt at the line first. Going to be two or three tenths. Let's see what happens on the clock across the line. He goes, and he win it by point six one zero for Schmidt six one zero. Nice job by Schmid, presently a customs officer as well as an Alpine racer at the age of 29, 2023 world champ in Red Parallel Red GS on Iverness UNR ski team. Good to have the Norwegian in the mix here. Let's move on to Luke Winters and Luik Schabel from Switzerland. Out on course. track they go. Doors open up. Good clean start by both. Looks like a little bit of an advantage on the Luke course side as well. Rookie from Switzerland, Luke Winters, U.S. Kido oh, Winters, launch, big Hang in time. there, baby. Wow, I talked about what happens when you get back in the tails of those 165s and you don't keep the center of mass moving down the hill, you get launched, and that was a huge one. Tough break for Luke Winters. He's going to have to make up a one-second advantage for the pro from yeah, well, for, for Loic, he never he never stopped his game. He just said, I am on a mission here. I had some good success. He's in the top 10 in the standings. We'll take a look back and see where that snow snake got. Luke, I'm not your father. Here it goes right here. So what happens here? Good, good turn there. Stru oh, tries to straighten it out a little bit there. Oh, it oh, oh, just, just did not kicked into the back seat. Yeah, it's like we talk about all the time. You got to move that center of mass ahead of the feet. You can use the tail of the ski, but the center of mass better be ahead of the head of the heel piece. <laughs> yeah. So Luke Winters uh, attended Sugar Bowl Academy, the top of Donner Summit, where they've got the silver belt race going on today. It led to one of the most legendary races in America. And right now, 
It's red course ready. Alex Point Day to see us this. But yeah, he does. The Spaniard and Laurie Taylor, the great Brit, on the blue course. Got a track they go down the pitch. Good even start. Pro from Spain on the red course side. So Laurie Taylor putting the pressure on him out in front of the Spaniard. As we saw some strong skiing from Brett Days earlier this season. Right now, it's the Brit with the advantage on the blue course side. Down low, aerodynamic, getting some real power out of the ski through the turn he goes. We know the blue course pulls ahead a little bit there as Taylor has the advantage. They're going to make the turn, but he's just going to get it back a little bit with out in front. There's Taylor really flailing away up there as it comes to the finish line. It's going to be super close. Now it's going to be the Spaniard at the line first across the line. He goes. It's going to be an advantage. That was some good racing right there. Zero, three, seven. Trouble up there for the, for the Brit, though. We got Hayden Scott in here, our fellow Brit, rooting on Laurie Taylor. And that's a good excitement there. Laurie, dry slope skiing in Aldershot, a nine second long course. That's where he learned to ski and uh, he just never looked back. Let's get going with the final pairing of this first run of the round of 32. Jake Jacobs out of Glen Falls, New York, the 27 year old going up against the Joker, Michael Ankeny, who was the second fastest qualifier yesterday and who did our our uh, course preview. Oh, They're on course right now. Ankeny on the blue and Jacobs on the red. So down the pitch they go. Ankeny, whoosh, he's bouncing off each other a little bit there in that third turn. So important to keep your ski out in the rut is Ankeny. We saw him run earlier with a POV cam. Second quickest, as Uncle Lee mentioned in this qualifying rounds yesterday. Out oh, Ankeny! Ankeny! Oh. He pulls it off down on his hip. Looked like he almost went out of the course. What a powerful move by Ankeny. That, as I talked about, Uncle Lee, the money turn. Yeah, you're talking. You highlighted that, and Ankeny just got his uh, money almost removed from him. Looked over his shoulder. Yeah. Oh, wow. Let's, yeah, give never. Mike, let's give Michael Ankeny a little peek at that. That almost major mistake up there. Yeah, take a peek back at this. Look, there's, here comes that turn, and he's sliding Whoa, out of his hip. Dude. Made the gate? Yeah, he made it. Cause that gate is super straight there. There's no turn at all, really, at that next gate. Ankeny down at his hip and on the knuckles. Full on. He saved it. He did save it. So just like that, folks, there's 16 duels, 32 going fast. Head back up to the start. We're going to do that thing all over again. Flop the courses so everyone gets even runs on it. And we'll get that going shortly. Big thanks goes out to Mazda, the CX-50, as well as the new CX-90. Fantastic vehicles. Spend your hard-earned money. Go to the Mazda dealership. Get yourself one. You will not be disappointed. CB Sports, we want to thank Chris Neary and his entire team for rebirthing what CB Vaughn started back in the 60s. You couldn't go anywhere back in the 70s and 80s without seeing a CB jacket. And you can't go anywhere here today in Taos without seeing a CB jacket on the staff, on the cameraman. Thank you, CB Sports. So CB, your presenting sponsor. And of course, Mazda CX-50. I've been ripping all over Taos, Ski Valley, the CX-50. You, you're looking good. I drove it down here, stopped in that little spot with that, that, that old jet. It's on display. Oh, it was dark. I want to go so, see that. Hey, we're going to take a break right now. We'll come back in just a minute time with the uh, rest of the round of 32 men. Then we'll get going with the ladies. Be back in just a minute here in Taos for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my god, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX90. Once again, thank you kindly to Mazda. Thank you all for being here. We got a great day of racing ahead of us. We just finished the first run of the round of 32 men. Every athlete that just raced, get back up to the top. We're gonna lock and load you and get you ready to rock and roll again. And as mentioned before, Phil and Steve Mayer from the 1984 Olympics, gold and silver medalist respectively will be coming down the course in uh, after the round of 16. Uh, they're gonna do a little a little uh, bro grudge match. I promise this is to be a good time. 
Now, Simon Spear should be on the red course. Philip Forchek should be on the blue, co blue course. Got the hiccups. Better have some more Celsius. So I had a good <laughs> opportunity to talk to Phil and Steve last night when they were doing the poster signing. Both avid automobile yeah. racers. Yeah, so. learned that so. last year from Steve. I asked him a question. He went for 20 minutes talking about cars. So the reason they came back out of retirement and raced with us back in the 90s, they needed money to support their race car <laughs> habit. So, so similar race cars and ski racing there's a there's an entry to the turn there's an apex of the turn there's a there's a track out in automobile racing there's a completion of the turn in ski racing respect your elders oh, oh this is actually talking going on this up is there. actually now so here we go brothers phil and steve are in the gate this is this is happening presently phil's on the left or the right and steve's on the left or the right <laughs> okay here we go guys uh, i believe phil phil is on the blue steve is on the red all right, let's Blue see how these guys handle it. You had the opportunity to announce for these guys for a long time. Oh, the guys from Monster in the house, Brad. Good to see you, bro. Gentlemen, okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 Phil, right, let's see it. Look at that. Oh, a little bit wide on the red. Get old oh, trouble on the red. Deep. Phil is on the blue, Steve is on the red, if I'm not mistaken. If if that's not true, it's Phil, the other way around. Trying to hammer down at Steve. Smooth over to right. jump. Oh, Steve is on the red. Okay. Yes. Phil, Phil on the blue, Steve on the red. So, silver and gold at the Sarajevo <laughs> Olympics. How exciting is that? Where were you, here? Kevin? Where were you when you oh, heard the news? God, Do you I remember? I was on the chairlift at Squaw going up, and they passed it up from the bottom to the top. I'll never forget oh, look exactly at where I was. Like butter coming off yep. the jump. Put your hands together, folks, for the Olympic gold and look silver medalist. So and Steve has been DQ because he missed the gate. It's Phil taking the victory. <laughs> So back in the day, we didn't wear helmets on the Pro Tour. They don't have any helmets on. Yeah, boys, good job. <laughs> we'll, we'll, get, we'll get you a sponsor. Don't worry, boys. Oh. Like butter. Nice and smooth. Yeah, that was outstanding. Good fun here. So you back know, to the top we go. The second run of the round of 32 obviously. for the men. Let's talk about how this works. We will now program the doors to start according to the winner's differential. So this run, Philippe Forcheck has a second advantage over Simon Spear. Forcheck has moved over to the blue course side, carrying that one second advantage. So you will watch the lights start first for the blue course, course side. Blue course so Randy Patson gives the start cadence. There go the lights. Fjordcheck blue, Spear red, Fjordcheck off first, here comes Spear in the red. So that's the one second advantage you just saw with the doors opening. The closer races, as we move through the rounds, that advantage will narrow as these guys eliminate half the field here after this second run of the round of 32. Your fastest qualifier by over a second, Fjordcheck smoked the field yesterday. His coach, Richard Rocos, here. Winningest coach in the history of NCAA there at CU. Always in the house when the Pro Tour is in town. As we watch four check cross the finish line, your first athlete to move into the round of 16. Four check, 10,000 bucks on tour so far this year, looking for more. Now, let's focus on Simon Spear. They call him Squishy. Did you know he was the Booth Bay Bubblegum Blowing Contest champion in the second and the third grade? That's right. And his birthday was yesterday. Happy birthday, Spear. Now you can sit back and have some Jägermeister and blow some bubbles. Yay! Now we're going on. Look at the wind up top. It's going to be Miha Kuner, who had a tough, tough eject on the bottom part of the course. He's up against the ropes with the max differential. The Slovenian, he is on the red course, going up against lucky dog Raphael Hasser from red Austria. Blue course The, the Seiko blue. banner looking like a sail up there as the lights start. So another maximum differential handed out here. So it's going to be the Austrian Hauser, which gets that advantage. Kruner gets a little bit crossed up, trying to get a little bit of a jump on the gate. Kruner already in trouble. He knows it. He took a hit yes, on that first run. So out goes, tough break for Miha Kuner, who skied so well last year, and well so well in qualifying. So tough on luck. we go Hauser to face Philippe Forcheck. So Hauser with one second advantage after that second run. Hauser goes on. 
Yeah, well, Hauser, no slouch at all. Newcomer to the game. He took third in the overall World Cup standings for Super G this season. He's into MotoGP. He loves himself some F1 and biking as well. Rafael, welcome to the round of Sweet 16. And uh, here's a peek right back here. He's uh, Mihaj's a second behind. Terrible start, nonetheless. Yeah, we watched that start, and when he moved forward he lost purchase with the pole on the right hand side the hand went behind him got him twisted up out of the on the top and he just said ah, it's no chance of making up a second right now but you know you always want to finish because you don't know what's going to happen to the guy in the other course we saw it happen in qualifying yep. but miha he took a pretty good shot there in that first run when he lost his ski took him a while to get his breath back hopefully he's all right who's going to move into the round next it's messin and steffi yeah, Adrian Messen from Garmisch, Germany. That uh, Garmisch, that community. There's a famous hot dog uh, movie reference, uh, Rudy Garmisch, named after uh, Garmisch, Germany. That's where Adrian Messen is from. Part of the World Racing Academy. Audrey, with the long hair, that's his nickname. They're, they're testing the gates right now, making sure that they are working properly. And... George Steffi, part of the U.S. team, went to the Stratton Mountain School as well, graduated Dartmouth, and he will be on the blue course. I got .127 also as a differential. Blue. All right, working on the gates up top. I want to take this opportunity to say hello to all the people that are watching live and on Facebook. If you want to tell people that you're uh, watching this okay. live, go to the World Pro Ski Tour Facebook page, and it's live. And for you folks that are watching at home or in your restrooms or in your cars stuck in traffic somewhere, welcome. This is Taos Ski Valley. They received upwards of Four feet of snow this week, red and it's been spectacular ready. skiing. Yeah. Blue course ready. Adrian Mess in Germany on the red course. George Steffi on the blue course. A slight differential, 0.127. Gate oh, opens first to go. Messi had that advantage, but Steffi, you can't even see that that small a differential. It's that with Steffi out in front taking the lead. Messi in all kinds of trouble up there. It gets almost ejected. It powers through it, though. Steffi, the U.S. ski team, touches down. The racer from New Hampshire looking strong. Here comes a big, strong German trying to put the pressure on at the turn. He knows. Oh, trouble for Steffi. Gets all twisted on the money turn on the blue course side. Steffi stretches it out here. You're going to be messing. You're going to make up some ground here as they make the turn. Steffi out front. A little bit too much tip pressure there. That cost him some time. Here comes the German charger to the finish line. It's going to be across the line first. Ooh. Oh. Yes, it takes the advantage. It wins. One, two, eight on goes. The German. Boy, for Steffi, he was looking poised to strike there and then just got a little cattywampus and it opened the door there for the German. Steffi, been a great opportunity this year watching you ski on the World Cup. Keep up the good work. Looks like he'll be sidelined right now as we go back to the top. Billy Major is going to go up against Christian Sovek, the super speedster who's walked away with $28,000 so far this year. Sovek has the advantage on the red side of the course. It's Billy Major, the Great Britain Ripper. The 27-year-old in the blue course. So pretty close run for those guys until the end where Billy had some trouble. Billy had the advantage when he was on that red course side. Gave up a .087 advantage to Sovex. Sovex doors over on that red course side. That's Sovex, your tour champion, coming in this weekend with 130 points and $28,000. He wants a big 20 grand payout today. Got a long day to go before we get there. Out of Jackie comes with that eight tenths of a second advantage. Christian Sovac, your tour leader, the rookie from Norway, a man of few words, lets his skis do the talking. Oh, he gets launched there a little bit too. It's going to be a long day on these 165 slalom skis when they get loaded up in a rut. So he's still out front though. And he had an eight tenths advantage as Billy Major puts the pressure on. Here comes the Brit, but we know the turn comes back. At the bottom here, the Brits still out in front. Red course a little bit quicker in the bottom. It's Sobek out in front. Looks like he's going to win the run from here with two gates to go. It's going to be Sobek across the line. He goes winning the run by 0.595. I like the effort there by Billy Major. The Great Britain ripper gave it all. Left it all hanging on the course there. Nice job, Billy. Look forward to seeing you throughout the rest of your career. 
Nice job. So Sovic, you're going to go up against Mason. Let's head back up to the top now and find the opportunity for Simon Breifos Kammerlander to take this one away from Jan Zabistran, representing the Czech Republic. So an Austrian on the red course and Czech Republic Chechia now as is referred to on the blue course. So Camelander got some work to do. 4.28 advantage. Camelander on the red course side. Gets a good strong start. Oh, he's on his inside ski. All kinds of trouble for Camelander. Top of the course. Not being able to get the pressure on the outside ski. Struggling now out in front. Is going to be Zadistran and the Czech Republic. Jan with the advantage now as he makes the turn on the blue course side. Drops into the bullet down to the alley. No problem on that blue course side. He's strong skiing. So Zadistran. Yeah, he's looking. Into the bottom. Bump. Rock in control. Solid. And it, to the finish line he will go. Who is he going to face off against? That'll be determined by the next round. Okay, so Zabistran from Chechia taking it over Kammerlander. Simon, you get to sit back, relax, have a Jägermeister, and watch the rest of the racing today. Set your sights on racing tomorrow. Zabistran, very impressive. Did you know he's studying wood processing at the Czech University in Prague? Nice work. All right, so they're doing some great work up top, thanks to all the race officials making this come together. We got a good battle coming up here. Jeremy Lagier from France. He's up against the ropes. River Radimus has the max differential against Jeremy, and they're loaded into the gates right now. So switching courses, it's gonna be Radimus moving behind the doors. So we're on the red course side. Red course ready. This is his second home ready. here. Taos, New Mexico, loves it here. After he was here last year, he said, I am gonna move down here. So he gets that one second advantage. Clean and smooth out of the start is Radimus. A little bit low in that second turn. So Radimus dropping down the pitch. A little bit of rut starting to develop up the top as the side slippers come behind. Radimus really gets some energy out of the turn. Here comes the Frenchman starting to put the pressure on Radimus on the blue course side. Here comes the head game. Round the money turn into the blue side. That River Radimus on the red course trails now, but he'll get that advantage back at the bottom here. The red course quickens out. Radimus right there with him at the jump. Radimus on the red course side now has the advantage. Radimus coming to the last two turns. It's going to be Radimus at the line across first with the win for River Radimus. That was a good one. Back and forth at one went, but Radimus wins by point. 817. 0.817. Radimus, you like how things flow around here in the POW and obviously the racing as well. Great season on the World Cup. Keep up the good work. Good. He's going to go good. to the round of 16 against Zabistan from Czech Republic. All right. You're getting a feel for how this works. We want to thank CB Sports, Mazda, and Peak Skis as well as Seiko. Let's go to the top now. Benny Anger is going to go right beside Enzo Centarelli from France. This time, Enzo is going to get the red course. Benny Anger is going to take the blue course. Who has the advantage? Centarelli had the advantage. 0.345. The doors open up for him first. Drop down the pitch they go. So crucial to get the ski edge at the top of the turn up there. They want to get to the bottom of the rut. That's when you get ejected. So down the pitch they go. Anybody's race at this point. Centarelli with the advantage. He's over on the red course this time. There, Austria now pumping it, getting some good juice out of the turn. He's going to pull away in the blue course side, but the red will get it back. Centarelli, see if he can close the gap. Looks like the Austrian getting a strong lead on the blue side as he goes over the bottom jump with the advantage. Looks like the Austrian going to have the win, but red gets a little bit quicker down here. The Austrian going to cross first, but not by much. It's going to be a close Ooh, one. The win going to be a tight one. 0 0.0242, one hundredths of a second. So Benny defends. Point zero two four, so close. It makes it so exciting when they go through the turn there. You can't tell who is going to have the advantage after they get into the alley with the blue course pulling away and the red course pulling back. Here's a rerun of what happened at the finish line. Look at the reach. It's all about the reach. Oh, oh my oh, God. Oh. It was just a fingertip difference. Point zero two four. Back to the top we go, E. That's important. You do your finger stretching in the morning. You know, do your yoga, and that's going to be the difference. Point zero two four. Anger moving on. Andreas Smith will go up against Reto Schmidiger, who had great success here last year. He also took a win at House and Hill beginning of last year. Oh, correction. We're going to go with... No, this is actually Smith. Smidiger and Smith. 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 Wrong graphics on TV, but right here in time. So Reto had that advantage, Uncle Lee. They drop out and down the pitch they go. One second advantage. So doors open a second earlier, clearly. But the one thing you cannot do is coast on this course. You've got to keep putting the energy at the top of the turn. You've got to let it run. And 
Skinsky get away from him, but it's all Red O. Yeah, so once again, Red, uh, Red O Smittiger on the red course on the blue is Andreas Smith from Norway. And it looks like Smittiger's holding on strong with this one here, keeping his eye sights on the finish line. Here he comes. So, about a two gate advantage over the line he goes. Looks like the match with on will go Smittiger to face Benny Angerer. Nice job from Hergeschval, Switzerland, the 31 year old. Nice to have him back in the mix. And we continue on. Now it's uh, what we saw on the graphic before Roman Frost and Arnaud Bosset from Switzerland. This go around, they're going to swap it around. And Bosset is going to go on the red course. And Roman Frost, who has the advantage here. Okay, Cades begins. Frost on the blue course side carries that advantage. His doors will open one second ahead. Robo set down to pitch. He goes. So Frost, the rookie from Germany, some solid schemes from Frost as he joined us this year. He's in sixth in the overall standings with 55 points. Is the German Frost touches down clean and smooth on the blue course side. Just got to keep your eye on the blue right around here. As he puts that hand down just for a second on that left footer going into the alley. So, out in front and heading for the finish line, Roman Frost, but you got to make all the gates. Oh, oh way hang in wide there. is Frost there. Didn't cost him, but you can't afford to make any mistakes and go out. Look at his little heart pump there. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I was so far ahead, I almost had a momentary lapse of reason. From Bayer Leverkusen, the German, 24 years young, Roman Frost, part of the men's national team of Germany. Moving on to the next round, he will face either Kiefer Christensen or Patrick Kenny. And for Arnold Busset from Switzerland, good-looking racing young man. We'll see you tomorrow. So we need to make sure the women are making their way to the top so they can begin as soon as we complete the second round of the round of 32 for the men. So look at the women up there as Caden starts. Patrick Kenny with the advantage over Kiefer Christensen. His doors will open first. So lights going down for Kenny as he comes out. Clean start. Remember the U.S. key team and trains where I coach. When he's around, we open our program. We add a test. Alpine Ski Education Foundation, Patrick Kinney, U.S. Ski Team member with the advantage over Christensen on the first run by a second. But you got to make all the gates and complete the run. We saw Frost with almost a costly mistake on that, yeah. that last run here. <laughs> Scary. Stay Get. super focused. Yeah, the keeper Christensen making time on the red course there. A married man. The kid from AK with the red hair and the red beard. But he is getting it handed to him right now from Team Global Racing, Patrick Kenny. He will easily move on to the round of 16, where he will join Roman Frost. So Kenny with that max differential. On goes Patrick Kenny. Kenny, Kenny, Kenny. Great looking uh, ski in there, Kenny. Great year of racing on the World Cup as well. Good to see you at the two US World Cups at Palisades and Aspen. All right, we're going Norway versus Canada now. Eric Reed, last year's winner here in the GS. The Canadian, he's on the red course. Luis Fassa from Norway is on the blue this time. So Reed with that nine tenths of a second advantage. Atomics up and out on track he goes. So a little bit of, I heard Cole got caught up there. The timer talking to the starter up there. Get a little bit of info up there. Bob Underwood and Pat. And uh, so on the red course side, he has the advantage, but they're going to make the turn here. Fauza will, will pull away a little, do the money turn. It's Fauza right alongside, and he goes ahead. But we know what happened down here. Reed will take it back right here, make the turn, and off the jump. Fauza putting the pressure on. Oh, twisted it's around. Fauza's in trouble. Ooh. He makes the game, but it's not going to be enough. That, that cost him big time. time. It's, it's Reed. Fauza was closing the gap. Costly mistake by Fauza. On goes yeah. Eric Reed, there was a winner here. Yeah, there was a fighting chance for a moment for Fauza, but Reed said, no way, I'm shutting that Let's door, take a bro. Look at that one, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was uh, spectacular. So Eric Reed liked the way that 20,000 felt in his checking account last night, or last year. And you can see here, gets gets twisted wow. around that gate. Look at landing on one ski. Oh, that's dangerous for the knees, isn't it? What incredible athleticism to land on that inside ski and stick it. But on goes Reed. That's right. Next up, we're going to go to the top, and we're going to look at Mr. Tenge Neff. That's Neff with one F. He's on the red course this time. Red course ready. He's on the blue course. Blue course Sam ready. Best from Belgium. So Mays with the advantage of a point five nine five. His doors will open first. Out on track he goes. In chase is Tangy Neff. So down the pitch they go. Really gets some juice out of the skis. His mail. Oh, Neff is all over the place, but he's going to jump back in. 
Mistakes can happen. We've seen it run after run here. A little bit of rut starting to build up, giving these guys a lot of energy. Got to be able, able to receive that energy and move with it down the hill. It's all about Maze through the turn he goes. Neff going to make up some ground in the blue, but not near enough out in front. From Belgium, Sam Mays over the bottom jump. Buttery smooth with three to go to take the win. What's the differential? Doesn't matter. The winner is the winner at the line. It's a max. Now Belgium, our first Belgium competitor to make it to the round of 16. Sam Mays, nice work. Tange Neff with one F. Good to have you in the mix representing Switzerland. And you can see how he was able to hold on strong after that, that uh, mishap on that gate. Just Gosh. losing all the speed right there. That, that washes it up. Twist it around. Lose that outside ski. Well, twisted Body's sister. going one way. Ski's going the other. Such a fight to keep that center of mass. This is Schmid front. and... Uh, oh, excuse me. I thought that was real time. I'm like, boy, they really got it moving <laughs> quick. Again, thanks to Seiko. Each one of the athletes that walks away victorious will walk with a new Seiko Prospect watch. You can see the banners up top there right in front of the start. Let's go with Alexander Schmidt from Germany. He's going to be on the blue course this time. He's going to get, go up against Norwegian out with the UNR ski team, Ivor Nez. So reminder to the ladies, make sure you're heading to the start because as soon as this round is over, we start the women's round to 16. So ladies, get to the start with only two more or four more pair to go to fill out the round to 16 ladder. So Schmidt with the advantage, the German, his door will open first as he is on the blue course side. Germany versus Norway. Schmid, blue course. Naz, Norway, red course. Light goes green for Schmidt. Down the track he goes. Really steep need to stay focused on your own course. It's so hard to do with athletes out in front of you. So, German with the advantage. Getting some good energy out of the ski. Serious pop and moving with it. You got to keep those hips ahead of the knees and not get to the midsection of the course. The German with all kinds of advantage here makes the turn. No problem. Through the left-hander and into the alley he goes. No problem. A little bit wide. Skis back to the snow. On will go Schmidt. Who will he be facing? Yeah. Luke Winters or Locke Chabelle coming up next. Schmidt, a customs officer. Olympic silver medalist in the team event back in Beijing and a bronze in the world championship. So good job, Schmidt. You're moving on to the round of 16. The Luke Winters had all kinds of trouble in that first run. Did he get launched big time? On yeah, the he, got, he got tossed one. like a salad. It's like That's it's it. <laughs> like our Caesar last night <laughs> like, in the condo. Oh, that, that was good. Beautiful family cooking around here. Hey, we want to thank Mazda, the CX-50 and the new CX-90 hybrid. Great vehicles. Pack your family in there. Get on a road trip and uh, get some, some face shots like Kev did. Hey, let's focus on the racing right now. It's going to be Loic Travel from VR's Switzerland. He is going to be featured this time on the red course where Luke Winters has a second disadvantage. The Olympian U.S. team member graduating from Sugar Bowl Academy. So, news, anyway, Uncle Lee. What do you got? So, looks like Luke is Luke is not going to run his second run. So, Luke Winters, after that, that slam it. down he had up there, the body slam up there, he's going to bow out, red save his ready. energy for tomorrow. So, Luck will have a solo run on the red course that will put him into the round of 16 to face Alexander Schmidt. Yep, so that'll be the Battle of Germany versus Switzerland there. But here, here, here he goes. He's getting a feel for how the red course skis now. He had one smooth go of the blue and see where these the ruts pop possibly are uh, coming up. He goes for the, the tail grab yeah. off the top air because he can. That. Yeah, no, he, he, got, he got most of the grab. Oh, that's beautiful. So on a, on a solo run, Luke Winters after his crash in the first run, Decided uh, I'll save my energy for tomorrow. So. Yeah. You know, it still baffles me. Yeah, yeah, go. Good modified Cossack right there. Throw some <laughs> freestyle moves in there. Yeah, dude. Woohoo! Hit to the finish corral with some some style points, yeah, luckily. And it's still baffling me that the straps, the, the, the straps still... on the top are not tucked in or tapped down. When you're trying to get speed efficiency, why those aren't strapped down is a, a it's baffling a, it's, to it's me. It's a thing. It's a thing, but it's baffling because <laughs> it will slow you down. It's, it's like proven. It's like rolling up the warm-up pants so they can fill yeah, up the snow. Yeah, that, that one kills I, me, I, too. I don't get that one either. Yep, kids these days. <laughs> anyway, let's go up top. Loic is going to be advancing 
on to the next round. And we're looking at uh, Lori Taylor, the pride of Great Britain, going up against Look Alex that grab. Oh, replay. <laughs> Oh, that was good. Okay, I think they're going to forward fast. Yeah, they are. One. You take it, dude. He is skiing fast. He's coming. Oh, look at him. Look at him split. Oh, oh. darn it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're talking live to the people here, and we're talking to people on Facebook as well, so we're having a good time. Here's Lori Taylor representing the Great Britain. He's on the red course. Alex Puente to see us. The España, the fighting bull. He's out see, first. Yeah, to see us has got that advantage after the first run. 0.376. He looks so smooth, so casual, so subtle is the Brit. Oh, gets a little bit twisted and sideways there, trying to get the energy back. Just low in the rut there. It's just spitting him out every time, chasing down the Spaniard. The red course gets quick at the bottom, but we know what happens at the turn here. The blue to see, no problem, making it around the money turn on the blue side. Through the alley he goes. Down and stuck. The Spaniard shows what he's got earlier this season. Strong on the tour is the Spaniard as the rookie here on tour. Taylor trails now. It's going to be all about Tassis at the finish line. He's going to move into the round of 16. Who will be facing Michael Ankeny and Jake Jacobs up next? I like that Tassis kid. He took a fourth place, uh, a tenth and a fourth place over in Bear Valley. Walked away with 1750 bucks. So he's getting a taste of how that money hits his pocketbook. Okay, back to the top we go. Our final duel of the round of 32. And then we'll start with the ladies round of 16. It's the Joker, Ankeny on the red course. Jake Jacobs on the blue course. And the advantage goes to Ankeny. So his door is open first, out on track he goes. Ankeny drops down to pitch. See how he gets such a good high line there. Ankeny gets down the rut though. Back using the tail of the ski. We saw Ankeny blow a toe piece right off the top of the ski. Two years ago in Steamboat, Ankeny out in front. Jake Jacobs, reliable racing. John, dad out there, breakaway gates doing their job. Susan over in the merch tent. So stop over and see Jake's mom as Michael Ankeny, your number two in the overall standings on the World Pro Ski Tour with 103 points. We'll cross the finish line to round out the second round of the round of 32 to face off against Alex Deceased as Jake across the finish line. Nice job, Ankeny. Fist pump in the finish corral between the boys and Ankeny will back to the top and get ready as now we're going to move to the women's ladder. And all begin. ladies to the top. All ladies to the top. No more, no more jibber jabber on the bottom here. Put your skis on. Get your tails to the top. It's time to race. And uh, while you're thinking about it, men, if you've advanced, consider getting up to the top because you know how fast this gets moving. And we're going to take a small break. Be back in just a minute here at Taos Ski Valley. The World Pro Ski Tour World Championships continues. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. For the best deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. To the flow going here, all athletes to the top, so we can start our first run. Here are the World Pro Tour Championships at Taos. So Paula Moulton, Tegan Wold will lead that off. So athletes to the top. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racers ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, 
more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open, keeps you in it. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals, always served ice cold. Take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Fox counting down. Five seconds. Three, two. Becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer, and of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be the future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West, come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana, with new thinking, unbridled passion, and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. So up there on the big screen, you see the 16 athletes that have advanced for the men, the men's bracket. You can see that Celsius brand banner up there. Don't forget to stop down to the Celsius tent right alongside the World Pro Ski Tour merch tent. Say hello to Susan Jacobs. And right along them, our friends from Jägermeister. Stop down and get yourself some 57 different herbs and botanicals to get yourself going. Though the women are making their way back to the top. And we'll pull up that women's bracket. 
I understand the governor's here going to stop in and chat with us, Uncle Lee. The governor's here. So. <laughs> the governor of New Mexico in the house. We're excited about that. And Chris Neary from CB. Come on over real quick, Chris. Chris, uh, I'm noticing uh, a cool, unique shirt that was uh, given to me by your staff. That's nice. How's the world of, uh, of CB? Besides you looking good in the CB, how is the CB sports world going? CB Sports is doing well. We're really psyched to be here in Tahoe and getting all the uh, folks wearing our gear, you guys included. And uh, we're looking to uh, keep this World Pro Ski Tour rocking and rolling into next year with an expansion of more races and more places. And look forward to you guys uh, keep, you know, keeping on, keeping on. You guys can you folks uh, can see him. This jacket right here bringing out those eyes right there. I understand it is spring break for your family. You're here giving it your all on behalf of CB. Where where's the tribe right now? They're on the beach somewhere taking in this Good Friday. They're actually on their way from Charleston to Myrtle Beach for uh, just a couple days uh, hanging out there. I'm going to fly back Easter Sunday and uh, catch them on the beach for a few days. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But they are jealous that I'm out here getting a better tan than they are. <laughs> That's for kind sure. Kind of beachy like out there now with the sun baking down, getting ready for the women. Yeah, looking, so looking for if, the governor to join us, Michelle she, Grisham. She just went out skiing. I'm actually gonna oh, she went up. skiing. Go take a couple runs with her, and uh, maybe I'll get her back here in the studio for you. Make you get sure her back you here get her. Yeah. Right? yeah, make sure you get her here with a CB outfit on. Okay. Well, that will be a tough. She's wearing Gucci today, so uh, <laughs> you know it might be a little of a downgrade for She's her. Wearing right? Gucci. <laughs> Quote of the day. <laughs> All right, the governor's in Gucci. Thanks, and she's skiing. Thanks, Thanks Chris Neary. Yeah. Love bringing sponsors and former athletes and current athletes into the booth to say hello anytime you want to stop in and chit chat with Uncle Lee and I. You're welcome here. Yeah, please. We'll, we'll keep to it. We really get things confused on us. Yeah, we, uh, we, we, t we talk a lot, as you may, may uh, hear. So come on over this way. Uh, Paul Moltz and Tegan Wold, they're going to be teeing things off. And at the bottom of that 16 list, you got Trisha Mangan and Elise Hitter. I, I highlight those two because both Trisha and Paula had great years on the, on the World Cup. They both walked away from the season in one piece, and that's a, a, a testament because it's an arduous, arduous season. Did you know this was the, the largest cancellation season in FIS World Cup history? And in ski racing in general around the United States. Yeah, so many brutal. cancellations. The weather was, you know, didn't help ski racing out at all this year. We got a bunch of snow in the beginning that froze up hard as a rock, and every, every snowstorm we came back east, it just blew in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so it was so sad. Yeah. And then it the, would rain again. Well, the most World Cups on American soil this year, if you if you combine all the World Cups from freestyle to Nordic to Alpine, uh, that, that was the most we've seen in, uh, in the United States uh, ever. It was great to see, and we'll see a lot of those same ones again next year. The Alpine finals are going to be, Alpine World Cup finals will be in Sun Valley next year in the third week of March. So I spent many a year in Sun Valley as the announcer for the Jans Pro-Am Classic. Oh, and yeah. A fundraiser for the foundation there in Sun Valley. And then once we started the Pro Tour, my schedule didn't allow. I super missed going to Sun Valley. I announced U.S. Nationals at Sun Valley where Michael Ankeny grabbed his slalom crown several years ago. I spent 17 years doing that. 17 fun oh, filled so years. That, fun. There is just, no better sustained pitch groomers in the country than Sun Valley. Oh my God, Greyhawk is just oh. incredible when they fly over the top of Greyhawk and that Super G. And they're doing a ridiculous amount of work this summer on the for the downhill course. They're chopping down all sorts of trees and uh, making sure that that thing is going to be... There's Because there's, wow. the, the Alpine Championships are going to be 2025, 2027, and 2029. And this, the, this past... Uh, a couple of weeks, uh, the Nationals were there. River Radimus took the GS title. So strong skiing for Radimus here today as he's part of the round of 16 as we wait for the ladies to get to the top. Super exciting. So big thanks to our friends at Taos, Burt and his crew of yellow coats, making it happen here as we arrived on Saturday, battling the snow in my Mazda. Yeah, lucky dog. Never stopped me in the CX-50 getting ready every morning with my Celsius. The guys of Sport Insurance up in their game here with the tour. So many great athletes sponsored by Sports Insurance. Our friend from Hal from Tough Shed. Out in front of us here, we have the Tough Shed Bank. Stop in, bring some coins, put it in Tough Shed Bank. And wow. Jägermeister, reliable racing. Official supplier of our breakaway poles. Surefoot, I'm going to go see our friends at Surefoot up in Colorado after this. Get myself a new pair of boots. 
Maybe I'll stop by Gorsuch, buy myself, my wife, something expensive get, on the way get, home. Get some Gucci, you know? <laughs> Revo, the folks at Revo are out there. They got you sample goggles or to check out their goggles and glasses and DNA vibe, helping the athletes recover. At Peak Skis. Oh, by the way, Peak Skis, if you're watching online, uh, or if you're not, you guys go onto the Facebook page, World Pro Ski Tour Facebook page. They're giving away a pair of Peak Skis every day on behalf, and uh, thanks to Bodie Miller and Mr. Mr. Miller, Mr. Davenport, JT Holmes, and Michelle Parker. Those are the three, four athletes that will have custom skis, uh, and we want to thank Peak for their love and support. So about five minutes before we start the ladies, we'll take a little bit of a break here, watch our sponsor loop, and join us for some incredible first-run action in the round of 16 for the women. Looking, All women are approved. We've got total We're in gloves. I might need it. Uh, I might need a couple, just like two slippers. I'll call that in. I've got a radio to guy up there. Tom. So I need another man on the board. That's looking pretty good. I copy that, Joe. Joe, yeah, he's just he's just finished. Uh, he said about a minute or two left on that. We're gonna send a couple slippers just to. Yeah, I'm here. Um, I think we're good. Yeah, they're all here. Everyone's here. 
We're, we're waiting for the jump repair. We're almost about two minutes away for that. Well, then it's almost time to get going with the ladies' round of 16. Paul Moulton and Tegan Wold, then Evelina Fredrickson and Denise Dingslada from Austria. One of the two Norby sisters, Kaya, will go against Elena Exenberger. So we've got an international field here for sure from Italy and Germany, Austria, Norway, USA, Switzerland, and oh, Canada. And then Sarah Rask, here's a good story. Sarah this year shows up in, uh, where were we? Aspen to start things off. She's the only competitor that has beat Miss uh, Milzinski this season. So she walked away with the first race victory of the year. So watch out for Sarah Rast. She's going to go up against Fabiana Dorigo from Germany in the middle of this round of 16. So right now we have a little bit of a course maintenance going on. We're shaving the edge of the jump up there to try to take the make the takeoff a little more forgiving. So doing a little quick shave on that. Want to remind all the men, time for the men to start moving to the top because this is going to go quick. So, yeah, thanks to everybody who's watching it on Facebook Live for our show. We'd like to thank everyone who's watching online. Specifically, it looks like Howard Wishner, Peter Gerber, uh, Plesh. Those are some of the names that we see watching live, watching the shoveling of the lip and the takeoff That's right now. Joe Downing up there. Of the Downing family, Mr. and Mrs. Downing's pride. Also, Dirk Mays is watching, and Andre Drukarov. Nice to have you checking things out. Who else we got on there? Hayden's handing me the. Uh, Howard yep, Howard, we've already uh, seen you out there. Thanks for tuning in. We'll send you an autographed uh, ball cap from uh, Kevin Clark's head. <laughs> <laughs> got my Mazda hat on today. I don't know where mine went. It was attached to my pack. But I do got our, our legendary rubber chicken. <laughs> So once again, the 16 men that have advanced need to start heading to the top because we are going to start you guys as soon as the first the first round of the women's round is over. The men start their first round. So we'll be alternating back and forth. So the women will make their first run. They go back to the top. Men will start their first run of the round of the 16. So once the flow gets going, athletes, so important to keep the flow so we can keep all the folks that are watching us in the live stream entertained. We don't need any breaks in the action. Beautiful bluebird day up there, Uncle Lee. Speaking of entertainment, it's time for Mazda's three true or falses, and you're going to be the recipient of these questions. Oh. you got a 50-50 chance, Clark. All right, here it goes. <laughs> true or false? A snail breathes through its foot. True or false? True. That's true. Very good. Uh, next up, a candy cane's shape of J is related to Jesus. True or false? False. Uh, I don't even know the answer to that one. <laughs> true or false? You burn 20 calories an hour chewing gum. Yes. <laughs> that is true. Yes. <laughs> true or false. True or false. We Str digress. <laughs> Strawberries contain more vitamin C than oranges per square millimeter. True. True. Very good. Last but not least. <laughs> true or false. Chocolate milk comes from brown cows. True. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that to be true, but it sure is fun. Oh. <laughs> That's all brought to you by Mazda, the CX-50 and the CX-90. You've had the pleasure of cruising one yeah, of those I've been CX ripping 50s. around the CX-50 since I got in town on Saturday. Drove it down from Denver. Just a great, great day of seeing the sights and enjoying that CX-50. And then we got dumped on 50 inches of snow over three days. CX-50 just pulled me through. Every time we needed to get up to the mountain here, no problems. And I found sport mode. And you found sport <laughs> mode. <laughs> Good on you. Oh, yeah. A couple of buttons you. and red light lit up and say, here we go. Turn up the boost. Turn, Turn up, up the, the boost. boost. So. Well, so check out the Mazdas on display. There's one up by the scoreboard. There's a couple down on the plaza here. The CX-90, that big CX-90, the white one out there. So beautiful. So big thanks to all the guys from Mazda. Chris and Brad and Dan. Super excited. Want to expand and do more races and bring the exposure to the Pro Tour and the Mazda brand all over the country. So, Yeah, I'm looking at the... Taos Pro Championship bracket there. If you're seeing that online, the uh, far right-hand side, I think the champion re walks with 20,000 uh, yeah, yeah, per, that's... yep. And then uh, 6,300 for second place. So you know, throwing more money around, and that's the way that the world championships work out here. And we're doing the whole thing over again tomorrow, but uh, slowing, tighten the gates up just a little bit. So the 16 qualifying men should be heading to the top for Czech Hauser. 
Meissen, Sovek, Zabastran, River Radimus, Angerer, Schmidinger, Frost, Kenny, Reed, Massis, Schmidt, Cheville, and Tassis, and Ankeny. Those are the men that advanced into the round of 16. They need to be heading to the start because we're going to blow right through the first round of the round of 16 for the women. And the metal men will start their first round of the round of 16 and will be alternating as we go through the rounds. So, important for the athletes to get up to the start so we can keep this thing rolling. The biggest field we have had this season 32 qualifying men and 16 women. So just getting from comments on our, by people watching live, Randy apparently has been live on headset in between runs. <laughs> oh, Randy Passon? Yeah, Randy, starter. our starter. Attaboy, Randy. <laughs> Okay, Joe Downing still working on that jump up there. We need to get going. That's the truth. Thanks to the U.S. Uh, Department of Agriculture, the Forest Service. Thank you for allowing us to be here in the Carson National Forest. And uh, I, I will tell you this: I spent a lot of time in the uh, Eastern Sierras this summer, all through the the uh, the wilderness area. Very well taken care of. A brutal winter out west last year, and the Forest Service the way they get in there with their teams and they clear the trails all through the Pacific Crest, through um, the John Muir and the Ansel Adams Wilderness. Very, very impressive. We thank them for making uh, that space so free and for us to enjoy. So thank you. So once again, ladies at the top, getting ready to start their first run of the round of 16. We need the men to get right up there. So, because they're gonna start their first run of the round of 16, immediately following the first run of the women. Keep the flow going, we'll be alternating now that we get this round of 16 for men and women underway simultaneously. Women first and the men. Looking to have uh, Michelle Grisham, the 32nd governor of the state of New Mexico. She'll be in a little later to help us with some commentary. She is a diehard ski aficionado. She's out getting some right now. And uh, we'll see her shortly I think here. Chris Neary's going to go up and make some runs with her. Yeah. You know this diehard skier, Chris Hill from Mazda, proud of debt. Yes. Can't flavin'. That's Those it. Those <laughs> guys are out ripping runs. And Chris's wife met her yesterday, enjoying the festivities here at the World Championships, here we go. Time to put him behind the start. There's Molson and Wold, Uncle Lee. Yeah, Paula Molson. She won out here last year on the first race day. Uh, originally from Prior Lake, Minnesota. Did you know she was born on the 4th of July, 1994? That puts her at the ripe age of 29, forever and always. Raced out of Buck Hill and had a great season. 2022 Olympics in the uh, mixed event. She took fourth place just off the podium, eighth in Sloan, 12th in GS. That was the Olympics. Tegan Wool graduated from Montana State. She skis out of Vail, rookie to the tour. She's a slalom specialist. She'll be on the blue course. So this is our first place qualifier in the name of speed yesterday. Paula Moulton on the red course. Red course Tegan Wool, the rookie on the blue course. Blue course ready. Here we go. Okay, Uncle Lee, you know that. Tegan Wold is leading our Rookie of the Year stands for the women out of track. They go their first to two runs. Paula Moulton for the U.S. Ski Team over the red course side. Down the pitch you go. Here goes Moulton starting to put the moves on already over Wold down the pitch. So Moulton looking clean and smooth and powerful. Riding the rut. So important to put that ski in the rut at the top of the turn. You slam into the bottom of the rut. That's when you get out of balance. Moulton making it look easier. Her first to two runs in the round of 16. Moulton down into her tuck. Through the alley she goes on the red course side. Wold makes, closes the gap, but we know it's not enough as the red course turns back. Bolts and super smooth, touch it down, heads for the finish line to take away the maximum differential over Tegan Wold. 1 0 0, so one second. Nice job, Miss Paula Moulton. Way to go, Tegan Wold. You'll go back up top, swap courses. And uh, you might as well get on that lift now so we can be efficient with the process. Thank you very much. So Wold is one spot ahead of Evelina Fredrickson in our overall standings on the tour. And Fredrickson happens to be in the gate right now on the red side of things. She's from Speed and Yah, the 24-year-old. 
out of uh, Colorado University, better known as CU. She's going up against the Austrian newcomer to the game, Denise Dingsletter, who qualified in that eighth position yesterday. Beautiful shot up there, clouds passing overhead, blue bird behind it, there we go. First run for Dinksletter and Fredrickson. Fredrickson on the red course side. Dinksletter gets a little bit twisted on the second gate, the blue course side. Dinksletter takes advantage of that. So down the pitch they go with Fredrickson trailing now. Dinksletter on that blue course side, drops it to her bullet off the top jump, getting some good energy out of ski. So does Dinksletter through that midsection of the course, getting some energy out of the ski, really got to make speed through these flat portions of the course the best you can. Stay aerodynamic and still try to get the energy out of the skate. Oh, off the bottom bump, it's gonna be the blue course with the advantage. Denise Dinksletter, but across the line first, it's Fredrickson closing the gap at the bottom though. Dinksletter winning the run by 0 .519, 519. 0 .519, well, no, Dinksletter, no stranger to the top of the podium. Three medals at the World University Games in Russia back in 2020. And uh, during COVID, she sewed masks together and volunteered her time. Nice job. So, Dingsletter, you've got a nice Red advantage. Have a second over Fredrickson. Let's go up top. It's going to be Kaya Norby and uh, Elena Exenberger. Exenberger on the blue course, Norby on the red. Here we go. Norby gets a good strong start. Exenberger right there with her. Oh, down the pitch to go. You can't tell how steep it is from here, but really some good pitch up there. So important to carry good speed out of there. Stay at the top of the turn as the wind blows by as they head for the first jump. It's Norby on the red course with a little bit of an advantage. She touches down out in front. Norby looking strong on that red course side. Coming back to the tour with his for his first time this season with strong qualifying. She was fifth in qualifying. Now the blue course starts to pull alongside. Exenberger right alongside her. There's Norby on the red. They make the turn here on the red course. Norby should be able to pick it back up. Norby out front now. Her skis get back down to the snow first in a bullet, carrying some speed. Red course gets a little bit quicker at the bottom. Norby goes across the line first with the win. 0.553 for Norby on their first of two runs. Nice job, one of the two Norby sisters. We'll see Tuva coming up shortly. Right now, we shift it on over to the top once again. It's gonna be Sarah Rask, winner of the first event of the year, student of the year back in 2020. She's going against the German, Fabiano Dorigo. So She's Dorigo, a police officer. Rookie. Yeah, the rookie. She's a police, police officer. officer, exactly. Carries All right, time to put the lights on if you're a police officer. <laughs> That's it, put the lights on. Dorigo on the blue, Rask on the red. So, Dorigo. Strong start, Rask right there. Rask stands in fourth overall in the tour standings. So, bouncing around up there as they work their way down the pitch. Off the jump, looks like blue course. Oh, all kinds of twisted over the blue course side. Is Hexenberger. So, oh, another one, Barrett Stein standing behind me, getting all excited here. He's so scared Rask, me. And here we go. The German out in front now on the blue, but we see it turn back for Rask as they get to the red course. Bottom jump out front, still on the blue course side. Looks like it's going to be Rigo at the line first, but not by much across the line. The time comes to the board. 276. So Fabiano Dorigo, first place, Super G, the World University Games, second place in the GS last year, the World University Games held in Lake Placid. Did you know that's the second largest? Uh, event besides the Olympics, and it happens every other year. Let's ready. go back up top now. We're going to watch Aaron Milzinski, who has earned the right to be called the queen of the World Pro Ski Tour. She's on the red course, and Leonie Float Floatkin from Germany is on the blue with a work cutout for her. So Milzinski drops down the pitch, trailing a little bit as they work the top of the course, getting the ski in the rut early. So with the men and the women racing together, the rut gets formed a little bit further away from the gate. So these ladies really have to ski that rut. You can't pitch it off and get inside there. Here comes Mozinski, clean and smooth through the turn she goes. Now the blue course pull alongside, but still Mozinski with the advantage on the red as the wind is really whipping up there through the alley. Mozinski, your overall tour champion, third place qualifier, touches down with the advantage. All Mozinski trouble on the blue course side is looking to get in trouble. Mozinski across the line with the win. The max differential, one second, going to your tour leader, Aaron Milzinski. No surprise there, Milzinski. Silky smooth, four-time Olympian from Canada, showing you what's up. 33 years of life experience. And Flotgen, Leo from Innsbruck, skiing for Germany. Nice Red looking work. Ready. Go back up top, Blue ladies, and get ready for your next one. Here we go, Caitlin Harsh is going against another Norby sister. It's Tuva the Gambler. She's on the red course. Tuba and the ca gambler. Caitlin Harsh is on their blue course. Harsh, super strong start. Leave it Norby's behind. Norby's really a cool, calm, collected competitor. 
Looking smooth. She needs to start getting after it now. All kinds of trouble in the blue. Get bounced around. So here comes Norby, as I said, settling in there, staying focused on her own course. The band is going to go to the blue as they make the turn. You know, for Harsh, but Norby right there with her as a turn will come back to him. This is going to be a close run as they touched off off the bottom bump. Looks like it's going to be about dead even as they set down. No, it's Norby now. The red course gets a little bit quicker in the midsection. It's Norby at the line first and with the win by .583. Tuva Norby, the 21-year-old at Oslo, Norway, coaching for Aspen this day and age, living there, enjoying it. And Caitlin Harsh over in Vail. Nice looking work there. Those two ladies head back up to the top for the second half of your equation of the round of 16. Blue course ready. ready. Yeah. Next up, it's gonna be Marcora from Italy against Noah Duviard from, excuse me, Nora Brand, excuse me. So Brand, the German gets the jump down the pitch. She goes with a good strong lead. Climbing that start perfectly down the pitch. On the blue course side, the rookie from Germany against the rookie from Italy. Makora trails now. Brand in good shape off the bottom bump, riding the rut, putting her ski in it. You gotta press it and release it, get some energy out of it. His brand pulls away now as they make the turn on the blue course. Brand drops down into her bullet, heading for the turn now on the blue course side, still with the advantage. Like so it be about the max as he touches down off the jump with about a gate advantage. Here, Brand is trying to close the gap. Makora is trying to close the gap across the line they go. The wind going to Brand by 0 .579. 0 .579 for Nora Brand over the newcomer Carlotta Marcora from Italy. Ladies, head back up to the top for your next. So hopefully we have the men up there to start the first round of this round of 16 because we're down to our last pair of the first round of the round of 16 for the women. So women, make sure, like Uncle Lee said, back to the top you go. Back to the top you go. Uh, Trisha Mangan, you're gonna be on the blue course. Elise Hitter, newcomer out of Sierra, Switzerland, the 23-year-old. She's on the red course. Mangan with a fantastic season. Two-time Olympian. Blue course ready. Ninth place, best finish of the event, at the uh, team event in 2018. But Mangan, rock solid. Begins and out on track they go. Looks like a strong start of the blue side. For Mangan, down the pitch she goes against Hitter. So man get out in front, but not by much. Gap starting to close here as hitter pulls alongside. Still man can touch him down by about a ski's length. Into this crucial part of the turn where you really got to make some take some energy out of that ski in that flat section. Down to the tuck she goes. Man get on the blue with the advantage. Get some juice out of the ski as she heads over the bottom jump with about a gate lead. So Trish Mangan will be the winner on the first round of the round of 16 for the men and the max differential. There you go, Mangan. Zero, zero. And we will ask Trisha Mangan and Elise Hitter to head back up top. And we should be going with the men's round of 16 shortly here. Nice job from Buffalo, New York's own Trisha Mangan, skied out to Dartmouth, and also has a twin brother named William. Elise Hitter out of Switzerland. And what a pleasure to have both those ladies in the mix. We want to thank Tough Shed for their support and their love. We're going to take a small break right now. Take a small break. Be back in just a minute with a men's round of six. Men's round of sixteen. So we're getting the men into the start gate up there. It is uh, Jaeger 30, according to my, uh, my watch here. I'm having the diet non-alcoholic Jaeger right now. Um, and we'll, uh, it, it, it's a cheers. So we're with the tour yeah, champion. This is you, Ed. Ed that's you. Who's Cattle Lander. Here you go. Joining gonna... us in the, <laughs> the timing building. Prost, prost, Camelot. Prost, prost, Camelot. Prost, prost. Prost, prost. Simon Breakfast, Carmel Leonard. This is what happens when you don't make it to the round of 16, right? Yeah, that's what you said. I hear you. Now it's time for Jaeger Maestro. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. We support the sponsors if you don't make the round of 16. Cheers, right, Ed Rogers. Cheers.
Ed, right so far yeah. so good in your world? Yeah, yeah, everything's pretty good here. It's actually, it's really good, and I think we're really right. on our He's way. going sideways. Most of anybody who's watching both live and or uh, on Facebook, Ed's been doing this since before uh, most of you have been alive. Ed, what is your, what is, this is a tough question. What's your fondest memory, your fondest memory of the World Pro Ski Tour? Well, it would have to be the day that Phil and Steve skied on the pro race for the first time. Yeah, and uh, we, we had so many, we, you'd have to ha make a whole TV show out of them. Yeah, fortunately, we do a lot of TV shows for sure. Ed Rogers, the legend of sport who helped uh, start this event way, way back in the early, middle part of the 20th century. <laughs> Let's get going here. We got the dudes up in the gate here. It's going to be Fjordcheck against uh, Hazer. Uh, Raphael Hazer from Austria has got his work cut out for him against Philip Fjordcheck. So, here we go. Fjordcheck, your fastest qualifier. He's over on that red course side. Fjordcheck. The only pro in the 24s, but it's all about the differential now. Four check against Hauser. Good strong start by Hauser, the rookie, putting the pressure on four check right from the beginning. Hauser takes a little bit of advantage. The Austrian putting the pressure on four check, but four check is so powerful through the flats. Let's see what four check can do. Hauser really pouring on steam now. Here comes four check working the ski. Oh, Hauser gets all twisted around oh, sideways, oh, oh. loads the ski up and gets stood right up. Four check still trailing. It did seem to hurt the forward momentum of Hauser. He was getting some. Incredible juice out of the ski. Hauser winning this run now. Forecheck, Forecheck, Forecheck touches down, down, closes the gap on the red course side. Forecheck, Forecheck right, right there with him. Hauser crosses the line first. Forecheck, Forecheck doing everything he can. The advantage going to Hauser, 3-0-5. It could have been bigger. Forecheck fought back hard. Hauser was so explosive at the top of the course. Got Woo. that advantage up there and held on to it. 3-0-5 for Hauser against Forecheck. Dynamic indeed. Way to go, Hauser. Let's go to Mason and Sovec. This is Adrian Mason from Chris Germany Chris on the right-hand side. That Fabio-style yeah. hair. Yeah. Take a look on the red course. And Christian Sovec out of Oslo, Norway. Current tour leader with $28,000 in his pocket. Here he goes, and here they go. Excuse me, Mason, those are swapped on your screen. So coming down the pitch on that blue core side, it's Christian Sovek and Mason on the red side. Sovek, your overall, oh, great, great drone, drone shot. shot. Yeah. That's really cool. They make the turn here. Sovek with the advantage on the blue, gonna stretch it out big time now. Sovek again, as Uncle Lee mentioned, your overall tour leader with 130 points. Looking to take away a tour championship here. A lot of guys to fight through. Solvik gonna win the first of two runs between these two by .799 going for Christian Solvik. Nice job, Solvik. Winner in Aspen. He's just dominated. He's got two firsts and two seconds. Loves the way that American money jingles in his pocket. Does the Norwegian. Okay, we're gonna keep this party rolling. River Radimus has now got a little bit more challenging work ahead of him and this guy, Jan Zabistran from the Czech Republic. Jan's gonna be featured um, in the old white Luke kit over on the red side of the course. River Radimus has got his cool looking Taos colorful helmet, keeping his hair standard stock issue. It worked well for him in the latter part of the World Cup season. Here we go, Radimus blue, Zabistran red. So down the pitch they go, River. A little bit of an advantage on the blue course side. Gets a good energy out of ski. Some super angles. Radimus right there out in front. Babistron pouring on the steam on the red course side. Radimus still with the edge as they make the turn. And they'll pull away and stretch it out. You get to your head if you think that it's going away from you, but you make the turn. The red course brings it back. Radimus right on the panels. Hammered away as he makes his way to the final bump. Radimus still has the advantage. We'll see Zabistran close the gap on the red side at the bottom here. It's going to be Radimus at the line. What's the gap? Point two, three, two. Going to River Radham is 2-3-2. Two, two. Good, clean scheme by both those boys. River just knocking those panels out of the way and in a good rhythm after a great World Cup season. Again, a third place at Palisades. A great podium on a home turf. Crowd went wild. All right, Benny Anger-er. That's Anger-er from Austria is going to go up against Reto Schmidiger. They're getting loaded up top. Schmidiger will be featured in... So there we go. Tate begins and out of track. Red course. Like a strong start for the Austrian. Coming down the pitch first over Schmidinger. So Schmidinger trails. So the Austrian, Anger, figured that start out. A couple of strong Austrians here in the first run of the round of 16 for the men. So out in front, pulling away. And Anger over. So into the pitch they go. Excuse me. It's Schmidinger over on that blue course side. 
Schmittinger with that big advantage all the way down the track. Got it mixed up for a second here. Schmittinger strong to the finish. Qualifying in fourth, gonna win this run. Let's check out the differential. 0 0.660, 0.660 for Reto Schmittinger. Yeah, I had those six, backwards six, too, but I was looking at the uh, yeah, at the Swiss outfit there. That is Schmittinger on the red, 0. 0.660 you say? Six, okay. 660. Frost and Kinney coming at us next, E. That's right. Frost and Kinney. Roman Frost, the big German, the 24 year old. With the, There's a great look with our drone camera. I love that little powder Record shot ready. down there. Oh, okay. Same, same here. Ready. Sergeant Jones a little bit. And out of Tash, New Hampshire, one of your favorites out here, Patrick Kinney from the U.S. team. Team Global Racing on the red against Frost on the blue. Off and running. All business as they drop out on track. Frost on the red course side. Kenny on the blue. Get a little bit twisted up there, low and late in the rut, but Kenny seems to power out of it, no problem as he leads Frost down to the first bump. Kenny's still riding the tail of that ski. He gets some energy there, but it's also the dangerous place where he gets spit out quick. Kenny looking good, smooth, clean. He makes the turn on the blue course side where it gets into your head and you start to lose the race. But here comes Roman Frost pressing on the red course side. Kenny out front. Frost will take a little bit of an advantage as they touch down off the bottom up. Here comes Frost closing in. It's the American Kenny. U.S. ski team member across the line first, but a narrow margin. Kenny with the win by 2-2-8 for Patrick Kenny. 2-2-8 two, two, of their first of two runs. 2-2-8 two, two, to Kenny. Good job, Kenny. Good job. Way to put the hammer down. You got the advantage going in the next round. Let's set our sights back up to the top. It's going to be Reed. That would be Eric Reed and Sam Mays. Red course ready. Sam course is going to be on the red course. Eric Reed, the Canadian, last year's winner. And they are swapped around oh, once again. There we go. Sam Mays on the red course, Aaron. Eric Reed. Sorry, yeah, I had that wrong. Yeah, yeah, Reed on the blue. Yeah. Yep, Mays oh, red. Reed in trouble. Twist what a save. Throws him sideways, scrubs all his speed, manages to keep the momentum down the hill. Out front is Reed. Oh, Sam Mays. Oh, Sam would take advantage of that. But, so, another tough one there. So that's Reed on the right. You're right. So Sam Mays with that advantage. My apologies as they drop down to the bottom jump, touching down. Yes. So Mays over to the blue course side. Reed closing the gap at the finish though, not by much. So again, Mays wins the run. 2-1-2, two, 2-1-2 one, two, two, one, two for Sam Mays. 2-1-2. Two, 2-1-2. One, two. Two, one, two. So uh, sorry for the confusion there. That was indeed on the red course was Reed. Mays was on the blue and he was the leader and the winner of that one. They'll go back up top. Now it's Schmid and Chibble. Oh, a nice, what a heck of a save in the blue by, by Mays to be able to hold on to that. Well done. Alexander Schmidt, Germany. Look, Schauble from Switzerland. Okay. Behind and the doors now. Yep, Sh Schauble, Switzerland. Sh no, that's. So Schmidt on red, jumps out of yeah. track. He's already chasing Loic. Loic got the strong start over Schmidt. On the red course side, dropping down the pitch they go. Schmidt trails as Loic pulls away into the first bump. Here comes Schmidt though, pouring on the speed, straightening it out. The German pulling alongside of Loic as they make the turn. Loic picks up that inside line advantage for only momentarily four, five, six gates before he hit that left footer into the bottom jump. The German will straighten it out on the red course side. Here they come. It's going to be a photo finish at the line. German starting to turn it around and pulling away. It's going to be the German at the line first. Across he goes with the run by point two, four, seven, two, four, seven for Schmidt. Nice skiing by both those guys. Schauble, love this career highlight. He's looking for his first future World Pro Ski Tour win. So he's anticipating victory. So Schauble still got some work cut out for him against Schmidt. Here's a peek back at the photo finish. The German just reaching across and a couple ski lengths ahead. One battle remains in this first run of the round of 16. It's going to be the Joker, Michael Ankeny, up against the Spaniard, Alex Puente Tasias. Red course ready. Blue Here we go. Ready. The cage begins for Tasias and Ankeny. Ankeny on the Ankeny. blue course. So Ankeny behind the start door. So powerful. Ankeny gets the jump. But Tasias, nobody out of the start like Ankeny. Down the pitch he goes with about a half a gate advantage as Ankeny. But Ankeny is on the blue course. And the graphic on the screen for you folks at home are swapped around. That's the CS the on the red. following is Ankeny so strong at qualifying. Qualifying second. The oldest guy in the field in this race for sure. Ankeny, the American for, remember, the U.S. ski team. And, and slalom champion. 
National Slalom Champion, Ankeny, all kinds of twisted. Oh, man, nearly gave it away down there as Ankeny heads for the finish with the win. Gave away some time up there. Ankeny, six tenths of a second. Narrowly escaped a mistake at the bottom as he looks up the hill, shaking his head, going, wow. The Joker averting disaster as a paparazzi's right in his grill. And <laughs> you see right here, gets a little wide. Woo. Arcana, but able to get his feet back on there like a cat being tossed out of a window at 60 miles an hour. I like it, Ankeny. I like it. All right, the ladies will load back in. We'll take a small little break here. We'll take a breather, we'll shuffle the cards, be right back here, Tyler Ski Valley for the finals, the World Championship of the World Pro Ski Tour. Back at it, just like that, getting everything dialed properly. It's the ladies' round of 16, run number two. Paula Moulton, Tegan Wold will kick things off. They'll swap it around. Paula will be in the blue gate this time while Tegan will take a run at the red. Look at that shot right there, Kev. Love that drone shot, super cool. Just above that, left-hand side where the clouds are moving quickly, that is Kachina Peak. Lift is closed, but you can hike it. And I'll tell you what, it takes four hours from the bottom of Taos to the top. I got Mark here from Sports Insurance. Mark, hey, Mark, you got a great team of gals out here racing. Wold and Bolton coming on us next. Super cool. How's your team? We have an amazing team this year. We're very, very proud of our girls. They've done spectacularly all year round. Red course know, ready. The finals are the finals. Blue course so ready. Here we go. Here we go. Too bad you don't like skiing. Yeah. Tegan. Ah. <laughs> The love Off of the and running, Paula Moulton on the blue what has a second there? advantage. Tegan Wold on the red course got a lot of making up to do, Kev. So Paula Moulton with his second advantage after the first run left. Tegan Wold standing in a start tough break for a Wold. I don't know what happened up there, but it's all about Paula Moulton and the U.S. ski team. Taking away tons of money last year, which he over fifty, sixty thousand dollars She she won a race and she I think she took a first and a second last year. So one race after the World Cup season, she had a healthy, healthy pocketbook for sure. She liked the way that American money jingled in her purse, and she's on her way to the great eight right now as Tegan Wold is uh, just coming off the bottom air as Paula crosses the finish line. So Wold, our our leader of the rookie of the year. Skiing gets one of the best slalom skiers in the world. Got to be super exciting experience as Bolton moves on. That's right, and she's going to go. And Paula, pay attention to this next one. Evelina Fredrickson will be on the blue course where Denise Dingsletter from Austria is on the red course, course this time. Blue course ready. I'm impressed with Dingsletter. She's got the advantage by .519, so her gate's going to open first right about now. Out she goes on track. Not a good, not a bad job for Fredrickson to stay right with her. Dingsletter trying to figure out the start doors. So Fredrickson, not that far behind. What can she do? Dingsletter still getting some juice out of the ski. Pretty close as they touched on off the bottom, up a little bit twisted on the blue course side. It's Fredrickson. So, yeah, Dingsletter out in front, making the turn. Over on that red course side, he blue pulls away, but Dink Sledder will get that advantage back in the red course when he crossed the, the turn into the bottom jump is Dink Sledder, the Austrian with the advantage, not by much, it's gonna be a close one. Fredrickson right there with her. Couple of Scandinavians across the line. Dink Sledder advances. Dink Sledder will join Moulton in the next round. Some good looking racing. Evelina Fredrickson, you had your work cut out for you there, that's for sure. And we are chiseling away. I like what I'm seeing with the Austrian there. So Molson, keep your eyes on Dingsletter. You two are gonna go in the round of eight together. Kaya Norby from Oslo, Norway, one of the two Norby sisters. As we have a peek back right here, great even racing by those two previous competitors. As we set the stage up top for University of Utah's own Kaya Norby. Look at that replay here, this is a 
Super close race between these two. 1.95 differential there, so super close. Back to the top we go, Luke Norby Exingberger. Luke Arsredi. Okay, Kaya Norby featured over on the Blue Course. Blue Course, exactly, and Elena Exenberger with a later start because the differential on the red. So Norby with that .5653 advantage built into the start. Out in front she goes over Exenberger, the Austrian. Super cool drone shot. You can really see the de definition in those ruts and the grooves they're developing up there. The nice hard track underneath. Now we're starting to develop what we call the double rut. Inside ski, outside ski. So if you can use both those skis, it really gets a good energy out of it. As you watch Kajin Norby coming yeah. at you. So with that advantage and a big one, she will move into the ladies' quarterfinal rounds. Norby goes across the line. Yeah, that, that drone being flown by Corey Tiblis today. Great looking racing there by Kaya Norby, University of Utah Zone. Also European overall, Euro Cup overall winner in GS. And she's deathly afraid of spiders, did you know? <laughs> now, you, now you do. Uh, so, Elena Exenberger, you'll be sidelined. And here we go with the next battle. It's going to be Sarah Rask, winner of the ready. first Aspen Blue race. Ready. Took a first and a third earlier this season. And Fabiano Dorigo from, G from Germany, not afraid to throw it down. The differential is .276 for the German on course. So they drop down the pitch. It's grasped now over the blue course side. She had that advantage. She had all kinds of sideways up there, getting wide and wild. Rigo is grasped. Now looking strong on that blue course side. Oh, the cool overhead drone shot as they go through the turn. You can see how it's such a mind game is that blue course takes a big advantage. You gotta stay focused on the red as they make the turn over the bottom jump, but on the blue course. It's all wraps. Here is a hit for the finish line. Blue red course starting to close the gap a little bit across the line. We'll go, we'll go to the oh, oh. And Norby win it by 0.197. Norby takes the win. Now Rask taking close. That was Rask actually. Yeah, Sarah, Sarah Rask got that one over to Rigo on that and great looking racing. And uh, the police officer from Germany, Dorigo, will be sidelines uh, with a couple of podiums of the World University Games last year. So Rask, congrats, you're gonna join Norby in the next round. So Rask won that one, Bob, but he won I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And now it's time to get back up to the top of Canadians going up against the German. That's a great looking drone shot from just a super perspective there. Now it's time for Milzis Milzinski, the tour queen, has won all but Red one race ready. since uh, she started a couple years ago. So the cadence begins. Yep. And she's also the, the queen bee for uh, sports insurance team. She got a second advantage. Leone or Leo Floken from Germany has everything up against her. So predictably, with that one second advantage, DNF for the red course side. Off goes the German. It's gonna be all Aaron Bolzitski to finish this run out. She's jumping back in. It's always smart to do. Anything can happen. You lose a ski, you make a mistake, but this girl makes it. Very rare mistakes. I Aaron think Lee, Lee, oh, she did miss Leone game, missed course. some gates, so she yeah. is officially DQ'd. So Aaron will use this as another training run. She 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 treats every run as a championship run. Two, a four-time Olympian, 33 young years young, out of Georgian Peaks, uh, born in the Collingwood area, uh, and and Aaron Milzinski just knowing how to throw it on down. The pride of Canada and the pride of the SportsInsurance.com team. How can you be not fast with ski in your name? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well done. Yeah. So, Tuva Norby and Caitlin Harsh coming at you next. Norby with the advantage after the first run. Caitlin Harsh, born on New Year's Day 2001. 1 01 01. So, she's on the red course, locked and loaded. Again, she has a, a 0.25 disadvantage. The gate's going to open first for Tuva Norby. Red nice to ready. see both Norby sisters Blue back. Ready. Tuva was out the last few races, but let's focus our lights on the Christmas tree. Tuva's opens right about now, followed by Harsh's right about now. Up goes Tuva, Caitlin in tow, who runs a little bit wide there. Harsh in trouble already up there, getting out in the soft snow. So Norby looking clean and smooth, finding the groove. Again, that super cool overhead shot with the double groove developing up there. Out in front still, Tuva Norby, former champion here on the World Pro Ski Tour. Wants a piece of that big money we have available here at Taos this weekend is Norby looking fast and smooth on the blue course side, hitting for the finish line with a couple to go out in front at the bottom dump. 
Norby touches down like butter. She two gates to go to the finish to advance into the quarterfinals to face arch rival Aaron Milzinski. That's, that is it. So Tuva Milzinski will go. Uh, unfortunate for a sports insurance team as Kaylin Harsh has been eliminated, but Kaylin always having a smile on her face. We'll see her racing again tomorrow. Tuva, congrats. You're going to race a Canadian, the Queen Milzinski. I want to remind the ladies to make keep moving around, get back to the ready. lift, get back to Blue the top. Ready. We're going to keep flowing right through this, no breaks. Keep the folks at home entertained, watching our live stream. Back to the tails of the seas, out on track they go. It's Brand with a 5.79 advantage built into the start door opening. Brand looking clean and smooth at the top. The Italian trying to stay in the course and ooh, gets spun around there, gets some energy out of the ski. You've got to be ready to receive that energy and keep it moving down the hill. Out in front is the German, drops into her tuck and makes her way into Pro Alley with the advantage. Cool overhead drone shot. Now you can really see how the blue course closes the gap there. The false sense of hope as you make that next turn and away will go the German on the red course side. There it happens, touching down with about a half a gate. Good job to close the gap. The Italian not far behind, but not near enough across. She will go on goes Brand. Who's Not, Brand going to be facing coming up next, Uncle Lee? It's going to be their hitter from Switzerland or Trisha Mangan from the USA. Hey, Carlotta Marcora from Italy. A spicy meatball. A nice race. And you get it out there. Tough luck up against the veteran Nora Brand. Here we go, Elise. Hitter against Trisha Mangan. Again, Trisha, a banger ready. season Blue all over ready. the speed side of things with a lot of canceled races. She did a great job of maintaining her her health, and she is here. The World Pro Ski Tour again, off by a second ahead of Elise Hitter. So Hitter really didn't get a pretty really good start. Takes some time to develop that start. And they're trying to do what she can to keep Trish Mangan in sight. Mangan with a second advantage, but here comes Hitter, starting to close the gap on the blue course side. First run across wins, so they'll make the turn into Pro Alley. We'll watch Hitter pull alongside his men get out in front, still holding that advantage, and she'll get that turn advantage back into the second jump we go. Out in front, touching down, Trish Mankin. Coming to the finish line, the final pair, the second run. For the ladies round to 16 on, she will go to face Nora Brand. Nice job, Mangan. nice job. Some good racing, she had some nice success here last year after her World Cup season, and she's on her way to the great eight. All right, the dudes round of 16 is going to go right next. We had our first run a few minutes ago. Most of them are up top. We're going to take a small break and be right back at you with the men's second run of the round of 16 here at Towski Valley for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships. Okay, sounds good. Yeah. Cool. Who had the money on three and a half hours? Who had the money on three and a half hours last night?
Second run of the round of 16 for the men here at the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships, Towski Valley, New Mexico, the location. Hello, I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clarkie. Clark, who can complete a sentence, finish a sentence, and start a sentence all in one sentence. <laughs> it's a whole lot of blah, blah, blah. Oh, we got Barrett is Stein in the booth with us here. Barrett. Barrett, you have done a director, bang up job. Director of all things Pro Tour, setting the course, doing an awesome job. Look who we have in the gate. It's Philip Forcheck up against the ropes by .305 from Newcomer, from Austria, from the T-Roll area, yeah. Mr. Raphael Hasser. So, so what? Uh, really poured it on there in that qualifying, or well, he, that the first round against the lead. He's from Austria, you know, where they where <laughs> they take uh, they where they take racing very seriously over there. So let's see what happens yeah, here. here Not that Forcheck doesn't take this game seriously. Yeah, Here but we go. The cadence begins. Going to open for Hauser first. Let's see how Forcheck can respond to Hauser. Out of the track he goes. Forcheck right there with him. So powerful, so tall. Whoa. Here comes Forcheck down the pitch on the blue course side, chasing Hauser. Forcheck a little bit in trouble already, running low and late. Not able to get any juice out of the skate. Hauser all over the place, but he's really quick, super quick feet. Here comes Forcheck on the blue course side. Pull alongside. He was so strong yesterday in the flash. Hauser on the red. Forcheck going to really pull away on the blue course side. Got to stay focused. Hauser knows he's going to get it back on the red source side. Here comes Forcheck. Gets a big energy out of the ski. Chasing Hauser from the start. Into the bottom jump they go. Here comes, oh, Forcheck. Oh, Forcheck out. Take off he goes. Oh, Not happy with that. The Austrian first pro to move into the quarterfinals. Oh, Hauser. Forcheck. Man, he was running and gunning, and he knew he had to apply pressure on that last turn. He just applied too much and shot out. And Forcheck exits stage right. So here's a peek at it one more time, coming into the straight and narrow from behind. He gets into the back seat, misses oh. that gate, and play that smart not to try to get into, get into the back seat. Uh, that's a bummer because that was going to be a photo finish there. What a battle. That's pro ski racing. Ten runs to win it here for the men, eight for the women. Back to the top we go. Sovic, our tour champion with the overall advantage, Uncle Lee, coming up this next pair. Yeah, Sovic has already earned $28,000 in cold, hard cash. A couple of firsts, a couple of seconds, uh, one and two, both in Aspen and in Bear Valley. This is the third stop of the tour for those of you new to this event. Uh, third year in a row, we've been down to Taos for the World Championships, and every year we get more and more talent here. Speaking of which, Adrian Messen from Garmisch, Germany, he's on the left-hand side going up against Christian Sovek from Oslo, Norway. 
and the advantage goes to Sovek by almost eight tenths of a second. Here we go, Sovek off first. Oh, gotta love that drone shot. Sovek gets a little bit twisted coming out of the start as the German trails down the pitch she goes. Sovek had a 7.99. Oh, the German in all kinds of trouble. Down at his nice hip and save. back up. It's an incredible move to keep it in the course. Hardly lost any forward momentum, but your tour champion, Sovek, so experienced, leading the tour at this point with 130 points and starting to stretch it out here. Going to move into the quarterfinals. We got to get it done first, though. Look at the power of the Fabio hair by the German, Adrian Messen. He's doing everything. He's pushing Gates out of the way. He sideways oh, does the 180. Wow. Extra bonus points for that. If he were to execute it across the finish line. Same spot there, Uncle Lee. <laughs> Jesus. Vortchek. Oh, my God. Action packed here today. And the yeah. World Ski Tour Championship. Woo. Sobek goes on to face Hauser. That is the same. That's the air of the day, the save of the day. The Fabio hair saved him. Have a peek right here. He loads it up, bashes the gate out of the way, does a 180 in the air, and lets the skis rotate. Instead of trying to like solve the problem, he properly landed backwards and saved the knees, I believe. That was, a groin pull. <laughs> that was definitely a groin pull. Get him into the massage tent. Adrian, great crash of the day so far. Let's go up top, River Radimus and Jan Zabistran from the Czech Republic. Blue the advantage goes to River, 0 0.232. The red gate's gonna open up first. Watch the Christmas lights. Here we go. Out on track we go. Radimus with that narrow 2-3-2 three, two, three, two advantage. Out. Oh, Radimus is in trouble up there. Puts a hand out, gets twisted. So, Zabistran, oh, all over the place. Is Radimus juicing him out of the turn. But you gotta get it done here. Is River gonna charge now through the flat section. Zabastran, strong, putting some energy into the ski. He's going to take that advantage at the turn. Can River make it up on the red course side? Through the alley they go. Zabastran is going to make the turn first. Here comes Radimus trying to everything again to straighten the course out. Zabastran out in front still. Here comes Radimus, half a gate behind now at the line. It's going to be Zabastran crossing first into the quarterfinals. Go Zabastran over River Radimus. Wow, Zabastran just capitalizing on River's slight mistake right there. And that is the nature of head-to-head -head racing. Zabastran, I'm liking what I'm seeing. You can see up top, just gets late, scrubs his speed, puts the hand down, lays his hip into the ruts. And from there, it's uh, game over, trying to play catch up. Yeah, it's pretty intense, those top turns. Well, bummer for, bummer for River, not gonna make it into the, the finals today, but with a whole other chance tomorrow. Let's get going with Reto Schmidiger and Benny Anger from Austria. The advantage, this one will go to Schmidiger with .660. He's out in front right now, the Swiss Ripper. Schmidiger down the pitch with the advantage. She had a 660, and Anger super fast. Now he's having some trouble to run to that top three or four gates up there. So out in front still, Reto Schmidiger closing the gap though. Here comes Benny Anger trying to straighten this course out best he can. Schmidinger right out ahead, see on the red course. Here comes the blue alongside. Schmidinger on the red, gonna get that advantage back as he make the turn. Head for the bottom jump, and Schmidinger out in front, the red course side, straighten it out. Schmidinger, but it's Anger trying to close the gap, not gonna happen. Schmidinger at the line to advance into the quarterfinal rounds to face off against Zabastran. Yeah, battle of, battle of uh, Central Europe, Switzerland against Austria there. Anger, excellent effort right there, but you were outgunned for a moment there, young man. Okay, you're getting a feel for how this whole game works out here at the World Pro Ski Tour. We're moving and grooving, and these guys are shaking all their bacon. We got ourselves Roman Frost up against Patrick Kenny in the next duel. Pat holds the advantage, 2-2-8 over Roman Frost. So, US ski team member gets behind the start doors. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's some deep ruts getting in there. Got to figure out what to do. Maybe throw the cat on it for tomorrow. But right now, focus your sights on the German, Roman Frost. He's on the blue course. USA's own Patrick Kenny on the red course. His gate will open slightly first. It does. Off we go. There goes Kenny down the pitch with that narrow advantage after the first run at a 2-2-8. Two, two, Kenny stay at the top of the rut. Gives a good energy out of, the, out of that rut. You really need to use that rut to your advantage. So it's a jump. It's anybody's race. Looks like a dead even one. Kenny, a little bit wide when he lands, but he's starting to get some juice out of the ski. Is the German, Roman Frost, making the turn 
Start trying not to let it get into your head. Kennedy stays focused on the red core side. He knows he's going to get it back. Looks like it's going to be Frost with a strong advantage. Here they come off the bottom jump. Here comes Kennedy trying to make the gap. Frost going to get there first. Unfortunately, across the line, he goes. Frost with a win by one, two, eight. Great close racing. One, two, eight to Frost. On he will go. So Team USA is getting banged up here. First, Radimus knocked out. Now Kenny knocked out. And uh, we are looking to see what will happen in the rest. It's going to be Canada now up against the Belgium competitor, Sam Mays. Dropped that first run. It was Mays by, with the advantage. Yes, you speak the truth by 2.212. Yeah, so Reed, he's going to swap courses. He's over on the blue side this time. Mays stirring, stirring it up. He's known for stirring up the SHIT and for getting his bib down below. But right now he's got it on, ready to get it going. Again, great drone shot. Not easy to fly those in the wind, but Corey Tiblis. And, uh, steady as a rock. Yeah, he's, he's good. He's been, he flies drones for the, uh, for the um, what's it called? The Desert Racing Series, Baja and the like. So he knows exactly what he's doing up there. So Maze on the red course as we get that great overhead shot he was talking about. You can see the grooves develop. The, uh, that uh, drone shot really gives you perspective as to what these athletes are facing. A very narrow groove. If you don't get your foot in that groove at the top of the turn and you slam into it, that's when all that energy goes to the tail of the ski. Speaking of drone shots, did you watch Kids Buell this year? Did you yeah. see the downhill? That drone footage was ridiculous. Yeah. Had a world champion drone flyer shooting that like about 50 race. feet behind the Blue downhill. It was just spectacular. Best footage of any racing I've ever seen. Here we go. The gate's going to drop quicker on Sam Mays' side. Out he goes on the track. Sam Mays drops into a quick little bullet there. A little bit low on the line is Mays, but he's out in front over Eric Reed down the pitch. They go, oh, this is awesome. Look at the drone shot. You can really see the energy coming out of the skis and how you got to flow with it. Keep it moving down the hill. Hit that center mess. Here comes Eric Reed on the blue. He's going to start to pull away now through the alley. They go Reed down in his bullet. Mays knows he had the advantage after the first run. It'll possibly get some back on the red course side. Reed, a former winner here. Taos making the turn now. Here comes Mays right back with him. Touching down first. One. Mays out front now as they made that turn at the line. It's going to be across the line. It goes with the win. Mays by 4-1-7. Well, a bunch, four, one, of seven. bunch of new names coming on strong. Hasser, Zabistran, Mays. New names to this World Pro Ski Tour. That's great for the growth of the, of the sport. Been around a long time. And we're going to go look. Schabel from Switzerland against Alexander Schmidt, a newcomer to the game as well. The German rookie has that advantage, E.247. Yes, he does. And Loic Schabel from Switzerland will be on the left hand side. The German Schmidt actually, that might be swapped. It is swapped, actually. On the left hand side is the German Schmidt. Uh, the blue course, red course is Schabel. So down the pitch, Schmidt go let the run. The, the German has that advantage by 2 4 over Luke. So. Really ripping it along as a German. Get some energy out of the ski. Stay in aerodynamic, but really at the same time having to pressure the ski and release it and get the energy that it can give you. Down to the tuck he goes. Looking fast. Looks like it's going to be all Schmidt here with that win after the first run. Going to get to the line first, but we got to get around that blue gate. Waving his arms roll oh, off the window. Yeah. With one to go across the line, he will go. It's going to be Alex Schmidt, Alexander Schmidt. Moving into the round Schmidt. quarterfinals. Yeah, Schmidt, the German old, jacked up like a spider monkey right there, flying off that bottom air. He is hungry like a wolf for the for the the great eight. He is moving on. Another new name to the tour. So this is some uh, impressive stuff. Finally, it's going to be Tassias from Spain against the Joker Ankeny. Have Ankeny a look. does have that advantage G with a point six zero zero. See him underneath the red course Pro Tour banner. Yeah, Ankeny is our lone uh, USA competitor yep. in the mix eight. right now. So yep. can this the, the Spaniard to see us knock him off? On, Let's Michael. see Ankeny, the veteran of the tour out here, the Joker oh. off and running first. Track he goes, always a powerful start. And he had that advantage, six tenths of a second built into the start door. Ankeny working his way down the pitch. Getting a little bit bounced around. Those top four or five turns are rough. Here comes the Spaniard right alongside Ankeny. Touch it down. Ankeny back in his heels. This is where Ankeny's really going to get some juice out of the ski. So powerful. The Spaniard right there with him. Getting a little bit bounced around in the blue course side. Down in the tuck they go. 
the Spaniard out in front, but we know what happens here. Here comes Ankeny right alongside into the bottom bump. Looks like Ankeny going to have the advantage. Oh, Tassis goes off track. Ankeny on he goes to face Alexander Schmidt. Ankeny looks over his shoulder and takes that run to move into the quarterfinals as our lone American. Ankeny with big smiles for obvious reason. And Alex Puente to see us, a Spaniard. Really nice to see you come on strong on the tour this year. A real pleasure to have you here. And uh, just uh, off the off the back into the back seat, didn't try to hold on to that, didn't try to damage himself for tomorrow's racing. Puentes, take a breather, get some Jägermeister and Celsius, get a little lunch and uh, watch the great eight. So the women will be up next, the quarterfinal rounds for the hey, ladies. Let's, let's do this. Let's take a breather, have some Celsius ourselves, Kevin, and we'll be back at you with the introductions of the ladies, great eight, and the men as well. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. Best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals, always served ice cold. Take a miracle to come back from this. Heartbreaking end of the season. But what's this? For the moments when anticipation. Clock's counting down. Five seconds. All right, we're going to do our introductions coming right up here. This is Come celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. The finish corral. And then we will announce the men who have advanced into the quarterfinals here. So, we... so once again, women will be introduced at the top. The men will be introduced at the bottom. So top eight men stay at the bottom. Top eight ladies, you should be at the start already, which we think we are. Way to pay attention. Thank you. Okay, here's the top eight men. If you hear your name, you need to be in the finish area. Hasser, Sovek, Zabistran, Schmidiger, Frost, Mays, Schmid, Ankeny. Those eight, please be in the finish area for the introductions. Thank you.
Head of the gate. It's the volume down by the side of the TV, man. All right, it's that special time of the day, special time of the year where we get to introduce the top eight athletes. We're starting with the ladies. Kevin Clark, you're starting things off. Take it away. And it's Paula Boltson, a former champion here from the U.S. ski team. Paula on the red course side. Paula Boltson. And going up against her from Austria, Denise Dengsletter. And qualifying in fifth place, Kaja Norby. Yeah, now going up against Kaya Norby is going to be Miss Sarah Rask, representing Sweden. Up next, your tour leader and defending champion for the last two years, the Canadian Aaron Milzinski. And right next to her, who walked away with the tour title of the year before, one of the two Norby sisters, represent Norway, Tuva Norby. And a rookie from Germany, Nora Brand. And Nora, you're going to go up against the U.S. team veteran speedster, Miss Trisha Mangan. And those are your eight ladies moving on. So now we'll go to the men's side of the bracket. A newcomer here from Austria, Raphael Hauser. Come on out. And he's representing Austria, newcomer to the game. Good to have him. But no newcomer to the game, a guy who's walked away so far this season with $28,000 of World Pro Ski Tour cash. Representing Oslo, Norway, Christian Solvek. So we'll bring him across. Oh, out there with young athletes. So cool to be able to do this introduction with your tour leader. Solvek, big man with small, fast skis. Who you got next? Well, we've got a rookie from the Czech Republic, Jan Zabastrand. He's heading out, out with his junior pro. Step into the spotlight, Zabastrand, as they wave for the camera. That's right, Zabastrand, two-time Olympian. He's going to the Czech University of Life Sciences studying wood processing. How's that? All right, now we're going to go over to Switzerland. This 31-year-old is not afraid to throw it down. Great success last year. Please welcome Reto Schmidiger. Yeah, look how excited those young athletes are to join them out in the crowd. Look at that cool shot. That's one for the album right there. <laughs> That's it, inspiring these kids to be the best they can be. On to the next pair, German rookie Roman Frost leading the 
Rookie of the Year standings in sixth place coming this weekend. It's Roman Frost. And you can define the German team by the good-looking striped tiger-like pants right there. Nice job, Roman Frost, a 24-year-old representing Bayer Leverkusen. And he'll go up against a Belgium competitor living in the U.S. representing Belgium. He likes to stir the SHIT up. That's right. Sam Mays. Come on out, Sammy. <laughs> There's Sam Mays. Impressed with his skiing so far, Kev. Heads to the middle of the corral. Yeah, have some. I think these guys had a little bit of trouble in, in qualifying, <laughs> but now they've figured it out as we move on to your next pair. It's going to be another rookie German, Alexander Schmidt, coming on out. With that super cool Bogner Zebra suit on from the German national team, Alexander Schmidt. Alpine skier, also a customs officer, world championship gold in parallel GS last year. Nice to have you here, Schmidt. You're going to go up against a veteran from Minnetonka, Minnesota. Ski that Buck Hill. He's at 29 years young. Where are you? The Joker, Michael Ankeny. Oh, here we go. Ankeny <laughs> up to his usual tricks, the belly slide. Yeah, the old Pete Rose. <laughs> Gotta love that one, Ankeny. Great stuff. Michael Ankeny's such a consummate competitor and did such a great job in our press conference. But now it's serious business. At the top, we will go with the first run of the quarterfinals for the ladies here at the World Championships at Towski Valley. So Moltsen and Denslager. Twelve red, fourteen blue. Okay. About a minute. That was a slow minute. Thank you, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you, John. Oh, would you look at that? We got racers in the gates. This is exciting. We have ourselves two ladies in the great eight. It's going to be Denise Dingsletter on the left-hand side representing Austria. Newcomer to the game. She's going up against Miss Paula Moulton, who won this particular event last season, fresh off the World Cup. So it's USA versus Austria. I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark. Here we go. Out on track they go. Denny missed start of the first run. Down the pitch they go from the U.S. ski team, Paula Moulton. Keeping a nice, clean, high line. A little bit stood up there. Some rut start developed. Really important to ride that rut as Moltsen touches down off the first bump with about two ski length advantage. Moltsen works the middle of the course, getting some good energy out of the ski over Dinslager as they make the turn. Then he's going to pick up a little bit of ground in the blue. We know it turns back as they go over the bottom jump. It's going to be Paula Moltsen getting bounced around in there. She's still strong in command in the first of two runs in the quarterfinals for the American. Paula Moltsen at the line. It's going to be Moltsen with the advantage. Oh, 0.892. 8.92, a healthy advantage for Molson. And in the booth right now, we're joined by Chris Hill from Mazda. Chris, I could sense that you could probably ski just as fast as these ladies, yes? <laughs> Uncle Lee, no way, absolutely not. These are the best ski racers in the world. They're so fun there, No maybe, hesitation whatsoever on that one. Maybe you had the Mazda under, <laughs> underfoot. Uh, no, you even. <laughs> I like your, I like Rick your, uh, your acceptance Rick and the uh, humility yeah, you have right there. Guys, Let's the gate is on for the next pair. Uh, Norby and Sarah Rask. Norby in the red course side. Simultaneously, door opening down the pitch. They go. Looks like Rask got a little bit of a jump over Norby on the blue side as they work their way down the pitch. Oh, the love the drone shot. Really see the differential between the two. Blue course, maybe a little advantage. Norby so good at staying focused on her course, touching down. A little bit of advantage on the. Blue 
blue court side for Sarah Rask in her first of two runs in the quarterfinals. Making the turn now, Rask gets that advantage on the blue side. Normie knows she's gonna gain it back as they make the turn on that left footer, heading for the jump. Rask out the front, Norby trails, but here comes the red course advantage. Back to the finish line they go. This is gonna be a photo finish. Looks like it's gonna be Norby at the line first, crossing it with a 1-0-5 advantage for Kaja Norby. Great job staying focused. Yeah, that was impressive work by Kaya Norby, longtime veteran of this tour. Sarah Rask, great success this season, beating Milzinski in the first Aspen race. Of course, Aaron had a fall, but Sarah capitalized on it. Here's a look, Chris Hill, what do you see at the finish line here? I see the hand stretched out there and just by tenths of a second. Yep. A win there. That's a great photo finish. Love the Tough Shed banner right there at the photo finish. CB Sports, Surefoot, <laughs> and Mazda right there on the far right of the screen. We're all happy to be here, happy to be part of the tour. Love it. Milzinski, she's on the three. red course looking up. Miss Tuva Norby, the last two seasons, these two have walked away with the tour titles. So it's a battle of the champions. Milzinski from Canada in red, uh, Norby from Norway in the blue. Go. Milzinski on the red course side, their first run against their arch rival. Two tour champions coming at you here. One for Norby, two for Mozinski. As Norby holds the advantage here in their first of two runs. Norby touching down clean and smooth. Aaron Mozinski trails on the red course side as Norby doing a good job making the turn on the blue. Gets a little bit twisted there, drops down in the bullet. Mozinski on the red trying to close the gap as Norby's going to make the turn on that left footer first into the jump she goes. Norby with the advantage on this first of two runs, two gates to go. Here comes Mozinski straight in the course out. It's going to be a close one. It's going to be Norby first and off the line she goes. Norby with the advantage of a 1-1-2. One, one, Ooh, 1-1-2. One, one, what do you see there, Mr. Hill? Another super close finish. You know what I love about the World Pro Ski Tour? Outside of just the really fast head-to-head -head exciting racing is all these athletes are so approachable. Any of these ladies, any of these men, when you're down in the base area and they come out of that finish shoot, they'd be happy to take a picture. They'd be happy to put their arm around you. They'd be happy to chat with you and talk about ski racing. So what you're saying is you've got a good scrapbook uh, through the season here, don't you? I do, absolutely. Love yeah. taking photos with these athletes. <laughs> yeah. right, course ready. Here we go with the next pair. Brand and Hitter coming at you now. Brand the German and Hitter from Switzerland. Here we go. Excuse me. M Mengen uh, USA on the blue. Yeah, Nor Brand, uh, red, Germany. So dropping down the pitch to go. The German trails out in front is Hitter. Getting some good energy out of the ski. So important as I talk about all the time. Getting that turn shape started early. So coming into the bottom pitch, coming at you. Blue course with the advantage. Oh, getting jacked oh, around. stood up there. Yeah, Mangan just took a hit right there. Those ruts with the flat light can sneak up on you and shut her speed down. Give an opportunity for Nora Brand, the German, to catch up. This one might come down to a photo finish, but Mangan. Mangan, he control there, Lee, you're right. Yeah, not afraid of the speed factor right there. High speed uh, lover. Trisha Mangan takes the hit, takes the win also on that one. Bye. 477, so 0.477 going to Trisha Mangan on their first of two runs. So that's the first run for the ladies. The men should arrive up there shortly. Time to talk Mazda. So I've been digging the CX-50 everywhere I've gone. It's just been so capable in all that deep snow. It's been so much fun. Yeah, Kevin Clark, thanks for driving the Mazda CX-50 down here from Denver. I'm gonna switch this interview around. I want you to tell us about your trip. Tell us about the feet of snow that was here at Taos this weekend and how that Mazda CX-15. So I took off on a beautiful day out of John Franklin's house and headed down. I did some obligatory stops in front of Pikes Peak and then I stopped at that, that uh, trainer jet, the Air Force trainer jet. And that was about the time I'd learned about sport mode. Oh, nice. Found sport mode, parked underneath the jet, took some cool videos there and then worked my way down into the valley in a beautiful day. We wake up in the morning to deep, deep snow. And that thing, anywhere I went, just did not turn a wheel. It was just go climb. We pulled up here, giant loaders pushing snow around. They snuck around the loaders and plowed through a berm they put up into the, my parking spot I went. Then we were dropping Mark off at the house he's staying halfway down the road. Super steep driveway, plowed by a loader. It was one car track wide. If you put it to the left, put it to the right, would have been in the berm. No worries. Got up top, did a little snap turn when I spun her around. Had Barrett panic for a second. <laughs> brought the front end around, pointed down the hill. That's what Barrett and I did a little video leaving Mark off. So things went outstanding. Day one, we went out to the car. It was buried. The only thing you could see was the Mazda logo. <laughs> I waded through waist deep snow, dug a little bit of snow out, cleaned the windshield off took the traction control off and roared right out of there. That's great, that's great, Kevin. Thanks for that testimony of the Mazda CX-50. You know, all of our 
SUVs come standard with all-wheel drive, and they're very capable in the snow, very capable off-road, really great SUVs to help you experience the outdoors. That's you know one of the I reasons. what I was yeah. impressed with, Chris, was it was great torque at low RPM. It was like, I don't, I don't have to put a lot of power into it, a lot of throttle into it, just keep the thing climbing like a billy goat. Yeah, that CX-50 is powered by two different engines. We've got a four-cylinder and a four-cylinder turbo. The one you were driving is a four-cylinder turbo producing 254 horsepower. So all the power you need to come up in the mountains, all the power you need to go anywhere that a mountain bike will take you, any type of off-road or even around town. You want to accelerate onto the freeway, uh, paddle shifters behind the steering wheel there. The cars just, just run, run great. We're really happy to be part of the World Pro Ski Tour. So we get an opportunity for folks like you to experience it in real life, and then we get an opportunity to display the vehicles out here so folks enjoying Taos, enjoying the weekend, enjoying the World Pro Ski Tour can come out and check out our cars. So I'm not done with it yet. I'm heading That's up right. to, I'm going to stop through Aspen, see a buddy of mine. I'm going to go up over the Million Dollar Highway through Silverton. So we're really going to put it through the pace, and then I'm going to head over to see our friends at Shorefoot, get myself some some new footbeds made. So the Mazda still has a big vacation under its belt for me as we we'll travel around Colorado and really have some fun. And great. there's a there's a shot of the 50 right there. There it is. Yeah, that's our Soul Red Crystal uh, Mazda CX-50 oh, all-wheel drive. That. That, that's, again, the four-cylinder turbo. Stop by and check it out. Look inside there. We've got beautiful Japanese-crafted interiors. Another really surprise and delight. If you haven't checked out the Mazda brand lately, please do so. Come uh, find me here in the base area. We've got two cars on display. We've got the Mazda CX-50 there, and then we've got the Mazda CX-90 right out in front of the base area here behind the activation space. Chris, how are they How are they selling across, uh, across the country, across the globe? Yeah, Uncle Lee, sales are great. You know, we continue, Mazda continues to gain market share. Uh, we had a best ever February, so we continue to see improvement in sales. People are either rediscovering Mazda or finding Mazda for the first time. And, uh, and they're, they're enjoying it. So we're, uh, we're happy with the opportunity to do things like the World Pro Ski Tour. Gives us an opportunity to get our brand out in front of people while they're experiencing culture, while they're enjoying the outdoors. Um, gives us an opportunity to continue to show what Mazda is all about. So s sales are doing great. Let me ask you this. On a big winter, last year was a record winter all over the West. Not so much in the Midwest or the East Coast, but the record's broken. Does that play a factor into sales? Does that translate into bigger sales next year based on what snow fell and out? maybe how some cars or vehicles didn't work? So in, uh, in the sales game, in, in the car business, the, the vice presidents of sales operations never want to hear a weather report <laughs> because uh, the wet weather shouldn't impact sales. Um, certainly when there's extreme conditions in certain places, people want to maybe consider getting an all-wheel drive vehicle or something that can handle the snow better. But I don't think we can attribute our increase in sales specifically to the weather in the West. We can can uh, attribute those increased sales to continuing to do more things like the World Pro Ski Tour, continuing to get our products out in front of people so they can see them. That, you know, that's a fantastic answer. And we thank you for the support and the sponsorship. Now let's talk skiing. You had the chance today to obviously witness. You're not talking about it. How is the mountain skiing? How's Taos skiing? Taos is skiing great. You know, there's a couple of uh, key values that Mazda has. One of them is this value called omotenashi. It's a Japanese word for hospitality. And uh, it's not just about having fun experiences, hosting parties and things. It's really about understanding the needs of your consumers, understanding the needs, anticipating needs of people. And Taos does a really great job of that. For all these guests here, Taos is a phenomenal mar uh, mountain. The skiing has been great. Kudos to the operations team for helping our team get the race course going for the World Pro Ski Tour and handling all the snow that came earlier this week and making this place great for their, uh, for their customers for the last weekend of the season. So skiing's great. It's going to be even better this afternoon. Hopefully that wind holds off a little bit so we all get a chance to experience the rest of the mountain after the race. Well said, brother. Well said. And I've been told by Barrett Stein that you're going to get the opportunity to uh, hang some banners and tighten some zip ties. Are you excited about that? Hey, I'm always happy to help. <laughs> you know how much uh, Barrett and, uh, and the race crew does to make sure these races can go off. Well, we're super happy to help uh, help grab some zip ties and help make sure everything's looking good. You haven't lived until you've harnessed and holstered a leather man, carried some zip ties, and enjoyed some duct tape with snow fencing <laughs> and banners. Hey, we're going to take a small break, Chris. We'll have you back here in just a minute. Thanks for your time. Thanks for your support. We're at Taos Ski Valley for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships Men's Round of Eight coming up. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. <laughs> oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. 
the Free Row Mazda CX-90. CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. And they were right. It's time now for the guys to do their thing in the great eight as that shot for you folks watching online. That is Kachina Peak. You can hike up to it today and get some freshies like that snowboarder is doing God, right now. Down. That's right. He's enjoying his modified food tray, better known as the snowboard. But we're talking all things skiing right now. World Pro Ski Tour presents the World Championships. we got eight guys chopped and whittled down from a field of 32. It's going to be Raphael Hauser from Austria going up against Christian Sovak, current tour leader from Oslo, Norway. Kev, what do you see in this one? So Randy barking out the commands. Look at that. There's our good friend Tomas in the yellow coats, the guy in the red course side. When we got here, he was bringing up homemade burritos, that what? Is breakfast burritos his mother made for us. And then we had meatloaf sandwiches. So big thanks to all the crew, Bert's crew, Tomas and Chris and Vanilla how, and how all was those the guys. Meatloaf? So, if yeah. you're making a meatloaf sandwich, it's got to be good. Mom's got a good so recipe. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like me and John Jacobs down there mounting on meatloaf sandwiches. But now, serious business. Raphael Hauser. Let's take a look at Hauser's qualifying efforts. He was 17th, but boy, he's poured it on in the elimination rounds. And then, of course, Christian Sovek, your defending. Yeah, Solvek is half Brazilian, half Norwegian, did you know? And uh, won in Aspen earlier this season, took a second in Aspen and Bear Valley. Solvek, Norway, left-hand side, blue course. Raphael Hauser, Austria, red course. The yeah. colors turn from red. They're going to go to green right about now. Kevin Clark, take it away. Champions out of track to go. Predictably, Solvek's going to get a jump, but not by much down the red course. Oh, all kind of twisted as Hauser. Unbelievable athleticism to get back in the rut. These guys aren't really used to skiing ruts, and on the Pro Tour, you will ski some ruts. These top World Cup guys like that smooth, hard track. Pro Tour, you got to learn how to ride the rut, and it's Christian Sobek who leads the overall standings out in front, putting a hammer down, just slowly amping it up. Is, is Sobek over the... Oh, Sobek, all kinds of twisted around. Sideways, oh, unbelievable. Oh, insane. By Sobek, but here comes Hauser, fights it to the finish line. That was unbelievable athleticism and strength to hang on to that one. Oh, my God. Oh, 0.43 advantage. That is why you hold on strong no matter what. Hauser behind by at least a gate and a half coming into the bottom part, as you can see right here. And then getting hung up on the gate. Watch right here. Arm behind him. Ski other arm up. behind him. Ski does load up. And what a save. What, what a save. Oh, man. So that's going to be interesting for uh, Sovek as he's going to be four-tenths of a second behind going into the next round. And now let's go. Jan Zabistran from the Czech Republic going against the Swiss ripper, Reto Smittiger. Cadence begins for Zabastrand over the red course side. Smittiger on the blue. Smittiger, luckily set a defending champion here down, and he gets the jump. Smittiger leaves Zabastrand. He's trying to figure that start out behind, but we see this guy power on the bottom here. He's all over the place trying to find that rut. Skis chattering all around. Is Smittiger running away with it here in their first of two runs? Now he can settle in there. Zabastrand, can he close the gap big and tall? Gets the power out of it. But Reto Smettinger out in front at the turn. 
and pull it away out of the course side as they head for the bottom jump. Reno Schmittinger with the advantage, a strong one here, their first two runs in that quarterfinal round. It's gonna be Schmittinger at the line first. Zabaskier closed the gap a little bit. Schmittinger wins the run by 6-9-5 for Reno Schmittinger. 6-9-5. Mr. Hill, what are you seeing so far, brother? Great to see Reno perform well again. He did great here last year. Great to see him on his skis and uh, doing the same thing he did last year. Boy, that previous round, seeing Christian go, he has uh, stormed onto the tour this year. It's great to see him uh, make that save, that recovery. I think uh, most of us would have been complete yard sale there. Here comes the next round. <laughs> That's Out right. of track they go. Frost and Mass, their first run of the round is 16. Sam Mass over the blue course side. Roman Frost on the red. Sam Mass putting a hammer down on Frost. Frost struggling here. Mass finding the rut, getting some energy out of the rut, pulling away in the blue course side. So it's all Sam Mass as he makes his first run in this round. Around the turn they go, went to the alley, dropping through his bullet. Did Frost make up some ground on that red course? Really trailing now. Sam Mass putting a hammer down from Belgium over the bottom jump. He goes in good shape, heading for the finish. Looks like he'll get the maximum differential here as he crossed about a gate ahead. So again, Sam Mass with a win, yes. 1.0. Slamming Sammy from Belgium, just stirring it up. And Roman Frost has got his work cut out for him. So similar looking country flags, similar colors, Belgium and Germany. This is how quick it happens out here. It's going to go Alexander Schmid from Germany against the Joker, Michael Ankeny. Ankeny takes the blue course. Schmid gets the red course. Ankeny planting his poles underneath a layer of ice. There's what we call launch pads, so he gets a good purchase. Ankeny, watch Ankeny. He's the man out of the start. Let's see if we, Alexander Schmidt can figure it out. He'll rock back on his tails as he's down. Boom, move out of track. Ankeny automatically gets the advantage with that powerful start he got. Look at the differential already. Ankeny finding the rut. Top of the turn, a little bit twisted there is Ankeny. Schmidt right there with him, starting to come on as they hit the flat section over the jump. Ankeny out first, getting the skis back down to the ground, super smooth. Ankeny working the midsection. Schmidt trying to close the gap as the German rookie on tour trails Ankeny. Ankeny, the only American left in the field, second in the overall standings. Here he comes. Michael Ankeny, he had a moment on the blue course, one of these earlier runs. Ankeny in control, buttery smooth landing as Ankeny pulls away at the finish. Let's see what the advantage is across the line to go. Ankeny with a 5-3-8 advantage in their first to two runs. Holding on strong, Ankeny, the Joker, had a great course preview this morning, and obviously that paid dividends as to how he's skiing now. Those eight will head back up top for the second run, and we'll take a small break, and when we come back, we'll have ourselves the eight ladies redoing what they just did, swapping courses, and we'll chop it down to the final four. Yeah, we're ready to go. Okay, yeah. load them. Yeah. Uncle Lee, we're back. Woo! -hoo! That's right, and the wind is picking up out here, anticipating strong winds for Easter Sunday, and uh, it's starting to push in here. However, all athletes have to compete against the same conditions. It's going to be Molson and Ding's letter. Paula Moulton, Team USA, you see her on screen right here, right now. She's on the blue course with a .892, a healthy advantage. Kevin, how does that play into the mindset for Dingsletter? Well, Dingsletter, like I always say, you need to focus on your own course, but it can be a challenge when you're facing off against somebody like Paula Moulton with such a strong couple of years on the World Cup. So 
things. Slatter, just try to stay focused as best you can and not let it get into your head that those doors are going to open. 0 0.892 advantage for Moulton over on the blue course side. Randy Patson and Matt Rogers getting everybody organized along with the yellow coats. Big thanks to Bert and the team of yellow coat guys. So instrumental in keeping us rolling here for all the weather we've had coming in. Bluebird day, but with that bluebird, he comes some high pressure and wind. Ooh, yes, there is wind moving and grooving. Top of Kachina just blowing up there. You know, Paul Moulton over on the blue side of the course was on the team, then off the team for a couple years, then reapplied herself, and now she's back on it. And she's here at the Pro Tour one last year, and she's going to try to do it again here. She's off and running with Ding's letter on the red course chasing her. Moulton with the one second, a little bit twisted there is Paula. So the men need to head back up while the women are racing so we can continue the action. So Paula with the advantage after the first run. And pull it away from Denise Denslinger as they make the turn on that blue course. Drops down into her bullet, continues to work the edge. You can see her compress and expand and try to get the energy out of the ski. Those Rozzy's ripping for her as she touches down. Off the bottom, bottom jump, jump in into the Semi-finals goes Paula Moulton. Moulton picking up where you left off this time last year. Nice job, Miss Moulton. Love the way that 20,000 bucks echoed in her bank account, and we'll see her into the semifinals. Let's go on to Sarah Rask versus Kaya Norby. It's going to be Stabella Scandinavia. Kaya over on the red side of the course this. Red course ready. Nope, it's correction on the blue, blue side of the course. Had a 50-50 chance there. Kaya. <laughs> Rask on the red. Yep, Rask on the red. Kate has gone out of track. They come. So, Norby's doors open only a fraction of a second early, and she takes advantage of it. Got down to pitch over Rask. It's Norby. Smooth and clean. Really putting that ski way out from underneath there. Riding the rut. The importance of putting that ski against that rut, I can't stress enough. She's doing a good job. You got to ski a little bit wider line because the men with those long legs make that rut further away from the gate. She is in control of this second run. Will she be moving into the finals to face off or the summit? Semi-finals against Paula Moltz. Oh, twisted around the red course side. Off she goes. It's going to be Tony Norby. Of course, it's going to be Garza Norby. Facing off against Paula Moltz. There you go. Norby, one of the two sisters into the semifinals, facing Molskin. And for, for Moltzen and Miss Rask, tough luck. You'll see on the right-hand side of your screen for those watching. You can see she just gets coming into plain view. Gets hung up. Oh, arm got tagged on the upper part of the inside gate, and that wraps up her day. Don't want to stick your arms through those panels that will spin you around and really work havoc on your shoulders. Nope, you don't want any of that. Okay, we talked about Norby earlier, and we're back at it. This is going to be Tuba Norby, sister of Kaya, going up against Red course ready. current uh, blue course defending ready. tour champion Aaron Milzinski. Milzinski on the blue side, Tuba on the right side. Point one one two, a tight one. The advantage goes to Tuva. Tuva out on track with that little bit of an advantage, but right there with her is your defending champion, Aaron Mozinski. So Tuva putting the pressure on the overall tour leader and defending champion down the pitch they go. Here goes Mozinski on that red blue course side, starting to stride away over arch rival Tuva Norby. Two champions, Norby not giving up yet through the turn they go. She knows Aaron will go out in front as we get a quick view of the big mountain powder. Here they come off the jump. Out front, it's still Aaron Mozinski. Not by much. Here comes Tuva Norby. Can she upset Mozinski here in the first round? It's going to be photo looks like Norby gets it done. Oh, oh, oh. Line. She goes. On goes Norby. Two Two Norbays in the semifinals. Could we find the sisters against each other in the finals? What? That would be outstanding. Oh, so. some great racing there by Tuva Norby Milzinski. First time we've seen her upset out of the round of four there. So interesting set of cir circumstances, but that is head-to-head -head racing for you. Take a peek back up top, would you? It's time for Nora Brand, the German. She will face... Trisha Mangan, who has a healthy .477 lead. Here Trisha's gate opens Mangan first. Mangan out on track goes Mangan down the pitch over Nora Brand with that advantage after the first run. Not by much, though. Brand right there with her. 
As Mankin works the ski well, trying to find the top of the turn. Here comes the German right alongside. Head to head, Brandon Mankin. Mankin on the red course side had the advantage after the first run. She can hold on to it. They're going to make the turn. The brand will pull away, but we'll see it turn back once again. Time after time at the bottom of the red, it straights out. It's a little bit short of line to the finish line. Mankin now out in front by about a half a gate. It's all hers with two to go. On goes Chris Mankin to face off against Tua Norbe. So it's going to be the Norbies of Norway against Molson and Mangan USA. That is the way the ladies shape up as the men work their way back up at the top for their second run of their round of the grade eight. We'll be back in just a minute here at Tallahassee Ski Valley for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships. Colin check, Colin check, Colin check. Get it down a little bit here. I'll start with Paula. Oh, it's very bright. Colin, do you hear my mic? Colin, do you hear my mic? It's gonna be a good match, I'm scared. Testing Hayden's mic, testing Hayden's mic. This just in, Hayden Scott is with Miss Boltson and Miss Norby. Take it, Hayden. Hey, thanks, Uncle Lee. Uh, so exciting racing today on this amazing Taos race hill. Uh, I'm here with Paula Molson and with Kaya Norby. Paula, how is the track holding up? Uh, the rut's deep. <laughs> That's all I have to say. It's okay, but it's deep. So you got to take those tips deep and uh, just trust that your ski is going to come around at the end of the turn. Excellent. Kaya, have you surprised yourself to make it this far in the racing today? Um, I'm not surprised because you never know in Pro Tour. Like, you always know that you have a chance. But I'm more happy and kind of relieved. Uh, but to say that I'm surprised would be not true. Honestly. That would be a stretch. Yeah. Paula, you won here last year and you've had an amazing World Cup season. Uh, what's the secret to your success uh, this year? Um, I think you just got to keep a smile on your face, have fun, enjoy the ride. Every day is not the same, so never take one for granted and push as hard as you can. So this is going to be a tough matchup, Kaya. Are you going to reveal any of your secrets yeah. to your opponent here? Tell me, tell me. Oh, my secret, I guess. I don't know, I can't tell. That would be very stupid, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it might be. So ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause to our advancing semi-finalists, Paula and Kaya. Good luck as you go back up the chairlift for your first semi-final run. Back to you, Uncle Lee. Similar set of circumstances for Paul Moulton as in last year. So Paula, what a pleasure to have you off of the World Cup, you and Trisha. And the Norby sisters, good to have you here smiling, bringing that Norwegian birthplace of skiing energy. Okay, we're going to toss to a short break. Be right back with the dudes' final run of the grade eight. like this shouldn't exist something this big this luxurious shouldn't move like a mazda and yet it does 
Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The three row Mazda CX-90. All right, let's toss to Hayden Scott out to finish Corral for an next interview. Hey, thanks, Clarky. I'm here with Tuva and Trisha. Let's start with Tuva. Yeah, I think you just uh, had an amazing run and you got a massive smile on your face. I believe I'm right in saying that's the first time that you've beaten Aaron this season. It is the first time I beat Aaron this, this season, so it's a really good feeling, but at the same time, we ski for the same team, sports insurance, so. It's a bittersweet feeling, but I'm very happy to advance uh, to the four. A shameless plug for sports insurance. I'm sure Mark DiPerno will be very happy with you. Congratulations on making it this far. Uh, Trisha, you had such a bad fall here last year, but you seem to have put all of that behind you. Yeah, I think the, there will be no fingers crossed super saves of the day for me this year. That's the goal. Um, Hopefully someone else is providing the entertainment, <laughs> but apologies on hopefully just crossing the finish line with no more crashes. Mm -hmm. Tuva, what would you like to say to the workers here uh, in Taos, uh, all of the yellow jackets that have worked so hard this week, led by Bert Skoll? I would just say a big thank you from all the athletes. I was amazed how good the snow was when it came out yesterday, because we all know how much snow in the last few days, so just thank you. We really appreciate all of you. Well done indeed. Tars, let's have a nice round of applause for Trisha and Tuva as they go up for the second semi-final. Well done indeed. Back to you, Clarkie and Uncle Lee. Yeah, thanks a million there. And Norby looking solid on those Van Deer Sports skis, a combo between uh, Marcel Hersher, Van Deer Sports, and Red Bull. Those things are coming on strong. I got on a pair of those that uh, Travis Ganong had. Boy, those things are fast. They are fast and a cool new ski in the marketplace. And as, as speaking of new skis, hey, if you're watching online, Peak Skis has a giveaway. Peak by Bodie. And uh, uh, you want to go online uh, to the World Pro Ski Tour site and register for a free pair of Peak Skis, giving one pair away the next two days. So uh, thanks a million for, uh, for Peak Skis for making that happen. So just about to slot the men behind the doors for this second run of the quarterfinals. Determine who's gonna move on. It's Raphael Hauser with the advantage over Christian Sobek. Yeah, by point four three. Four three. Then it's Reno Smittinger over Jan Zabastrand with the six nine five. Sam Moss with the second advantage over Roman Frost. And then Ankeny over Schmidt. Those are the eight racers battling it out for the semifinal rounds. You know, it, it being the World Pro Ski Tour, Kev, just doing the, the math here, we got Austria, Norway, Czechia, Switzerland, two members of Germany, Belgium and Ankeny representing the USA. So this is great. Six different countries represented. Or that's seven, actually. Look at the wind blowing straight up the hill. I hear Randy Patsy go, come on, baby, lay down that wind. Here we go, so making Hauser. So it's good open for Hauser first. As the doors will open up. Hauser blue, Sobek red, here we go. Sobek doing the chasing now, but he knows the format so well. Can't give it up to this guy. Hauser's been so strong in the round today. Really get some energy out of the ski as Hauser sending it down the fall line. Pulling away from Sobek here, holding on to that advantage and actually gaining the advantage. Is this an upset for our tour leader? Sobek looks so right now, way out in front is Hauser and his skis are running fast. Into the bottom jump, here comes the Austrian touching down with the advantage. Sobek is not in sight. It's gonna be Hauser moving into the semi-final round on goes the Austrian. Yeah, from Tyrol, Austria, Raphael Hauser making it to his first final four in his first race here. He's on the Austrian national team. He's also a cop and he took third place overall in the World Cup in Super G this season. So a guy who loves MotoGP and F1, making his presence being felt here. Up next, Smittinger and Zabastrand coming at you. Smittinger moves over to the red course side and some clouds are just ripping over the top of the Kachina Peak there. 
Yeah, so Smitiger Switzerland, he's rocking the Swiss pride over on the red course. Zab Jan Zabastan for Czechia. He's on the blue side of things. He Schmidiger's gate is going to open first with a .695 Lucarte. advantage. Here we go. One of these two is going to join Hazer in the final four. Okay, back of the tails of their skis they go, anticipating the opening doors. Out goes Schmidiger has that 695 advantage after the first run. Snow spraying off his skis. Coming towards the athlete on the blue course. Schmidiger out in front there over Zabastran. He's tall, he's long. Zabastran closing the gap down, touching down side by side. Super twisted coming off the bump. I can hear everybody hooting and hollering. It's Zabastran right alongside Schmidiger through the turn. We know the blue course takes off here. Then they'll make the turn. Can Schmidiger come back after the first run? It looks, it looks like, like Zabastran, Zabastran has, has an advantage, advantage off, off the, the bottom, bottom jump, jump sticks, sticks it. it. Here's where the red course gets quick. quick. At, at the finish line, looks like it's going to be Schmidiger getting there first. Across the line he goes. Schmidiger winning the run by 2 1 8. On he goes into the semifinal rounds. 2 1 8 for Schmidiger. On he goes. There we go, Reddo. Just like last year, he won the first event of the season at Howison Hill, won the last event here. Solid as a rock. Red joining Hasser. Next up, Frost and Mays. Sam Mays representing Luke Belgium. And Sam Frost representing we go. Germany. This crate begins with Mass having the advantage. His doors will open one second sooner. Down the pitch he goes, ahead of the German. A little bit wild as he gets the big energy out of the ski at the top of the course. Got to ride that rut. Yeah, rut sending the skis in the air. Smooth and clean as he makes his way off the first jump. Mass. Pulling away now, here comes Frost trying to close the gap on the blue side, settle into the groove around the turn to go, but it's, he's out in front, Sam with the advantage. Here comes the German as they make the turn. Not enough though, it's Mays out in front. The Belgian touching down with the advantage and that course gets super quick at the bottom with the shorter line down the hill. Into the finish he goes, on goes Sam Mays. Who is he going to face? Is it going to be Alexander Schmidt or Michael Ankeny coming up next? Ankeny with the advantage of a 5-3-8, Uncle Lee. That's the truth. You speak the truth, Grasshopper. Oh, Here we go. Boys. It's going to be Sovek up top alongside. Oh, uh, correction. That would be Ankeny and Schmidt. Got my cards all mixed up. Yep. So Ankeny, 0.538 ahead as they load in the gate. Ankeny's going to be on the red, head, red course, right-hand side, looking up. There he is. Focus, determined. Looking to climb on top. He's currently in that second position of the points with 103. He has a chance to win the overall title. Schmid, the German, over on the left-hand side. Newcomer off Ankeny and running. Ankeny out on track with that advantage built into the start doors. A half a second. Ankeny trying to settle in. Clean turns at the top. Make sure you get out of that into the rut and let it run. Here comes Schmidt right alongside Ankeny. Ankeny struggling now. Fighting to stay on the tips of the skis. Ankeny struggling now as Alexander Schmidt pulling away. Ankeny finds everything he can do to try to close oh the gap God. as they go through the turn. Blue course pulls away. Ankeny knows he's on the red side. Could quicken it out, but uh, it's all about Schmidt right now. Pulling away now. Alexander Schmidt with the advantage. Ankeny trying to close the gap as he charges hard to the finish. Not going to happen today. On goes Alexander Schmidt, the rookie from Germany. Would you look at that? It's Austria up against Switzerland, and then Belgium up against Germany. That's going to be the way it shapes up in the final four. For the guys, great racing, safe racing, a testament to Barrett Stein and the course set and all the great course workers. We thank you so much for all the due diligence. We'll take a small break, come back to Towski Valley with the final four for the ladies, final four for the men, crown ourselves a king here on day two of three. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90.
Thanks, folks. I am in the finish area with our first advancing semi-finalist in the men's category from Austria, Raphael Hauser. And it's going to be a big, big competition, Austria versus Switzerland, because on the right is Reto Schmidiger. Raphael, first ever World Pro Ski Tour race. How are you enjoying it? Yeah, I'm uh, really enjoying it. I'm uh, beautiful here and uh, just having fun. You were telling me earlier who your favorite racer was when you were a kid. Uh, that definitely was Bodie Miller. And why did you like Bodie so much? Uh, his style and his, his technique really impressed me. Tell me a little bit about your uh, World Cup career and what did you learn from World Cup that you bring into the Pro Tour racing? Paul, it's really hard to say, uh, but I think uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm getting older with the years and uh, getting more, uh, how do you say it? Experience. Experience, right, and uh, makes it a little easier. Reto, you're kind of the wily veteran amongst the two of you. Uh, you've had a few uh, Pro Tour races before and a few Pro Tour wins before. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I enjoy really this event, this parallel. Um, yeah, I like it, and yeah, that's why I'm here. <laughs> Your father is here uh, supporting you, and uh, I'm sure he must be very proud. Yeah, he likes the event too. Uh, he told me, oh, when you go to Taos, I jo I'm joining you, and uh, yeah, he, he likes the event too, so we are having fun here. And Raphael, I'll give you the last word. What do you have to do to advance into today's final? Hard to say. I'm um, putting down two good runs and, uh, and hoping that I can be faster than the Swiss guys this time. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice round of applause for Raphael and Reto as they go back up to the start. Back to you, Uncle Lee and Clarky in the studio. That's good stuff. That is Hayden Scott, responsible for most everything down here when it comes to the live show. We've got a team here, and we'll thank all them in just a bit. But we're going to get going with the men's round of four, the ladies' round of four, and eventually we're going to crown ourselves a king and a queen. But, Clarky, do you know who we have in between us now? During the break, you know who just showed up out of nowhere? Like, like abracadabra? Guess who? The governor. The governor. The governor. The governor. <laughs> the governor. That's right. Michelle Grisham. Uh, what, what is your What's your middle name, Michelle? It's Luhan. Luhan. Yeah, don't mess with that. Is that Dutch Romanian for beautiful? <laughs> oh. You know, I'm gonna sign your head <laughs> twice now. I, she, I love it. Yes, I'm getting the sharpie. By the way, Kevin, she's decided. She's decided she's gonna sign my bald head. I'm getting an autograph wow. today. Permanent, <laughs> permanent marker. A permanent marker. Always a, a permanent marker. Do I need this? You need that microphone. Right, put it, okay, put it close yeah. so people yes, can hear. Sir. Yeah. This is the, right. ma the mayor, excuse me, the governor of New Mexico, the 32nd governor. That's is that correct. right? That's correct. That's right. Okay. And how many 30 terms? 32nd, 32 inches high. <laughs> <laughs> She's actually standing up right now, folks. <laughs> it wouldn't make any difference. Look at this beautiful ring. Is your husband here? Uh, no, that's, that's, you know, that's even better. That, it, <laughs> that is, we're talk okay, we're he talking. He broke his shoulder <laughs> skiing in Taos three weeks ago. Did oh, he really? Oh. He did. Because you pushed him off the chairlift? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm a loving, kind, wonderful <laughs> spouse. Like, but like I this. did say you go first down that steep are, are, run. Are you, like, honey, this is a great chairlift. Are you a better skier? Yes. Yes. Yeah, there yeah, you are. He's not can't ski with you anymore. <laughs> hey, talk. He's faster. He's faster. But not anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, his not shoulder. Anymore. That every little oh. bump and every bump oh. on his shoulder hurts. That's no fun. Okay, Michelle, I understand that you have been out on the hill with Pam Fletcher. Oh, God. Talk about how much fun that is. It is Fletch. the best thing uh, ever. I mean, world-class skier, Olympian. She's kind. She's fun. She's engaged. She's teaching me all about world-class skiing. And, of course, we got world-class skiing with this Pro Cup right here in Taos Ski Valley, New Mexico. Did you have to clear your, your calendar in order to make time? You know, I actually did, and it was really hard. Really hard. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was gotta all go about skiing. It. Yeah, on my official day. But this is what governors get to do: promote their states. We have record tourism. This is an incredible spot. This ski area, bar none, incredibly competitive, versatile for everyone. We're breaking numbers: 40 million tourist visitors in 2022. And the best part: you know what happened this morning to get ready for this race? A completely uh, electric field EV cat. 
first one in the country oh, was doing super the work. Cool. Uh, this is a B Corp, completely sustainable, environmentally sound, showing good economic development can also be side by side Dude, that is, with protecting the planet. That's top notch. We're gonna get back to more All of that right. in a minute, but Hayden Scott right now has an interview with some athletes. Hayden, take it away. Hey, thanks, Uncle Lee. I'm here with Sam Mays and with Alex Schmidt of Germany. Alex, I'm not particularly happy with you because you knocked out one of my friends from Great Britain today. What's going on with that? Yeah, I'm sorry, but I didn't ski against your Britain ski. I thought I thought I had you up against uh, up against Laurie. Oh no, that was uh, that was Alex. Okay, I'll let you off. Let's go to a different question. Germany, you've had some great skiers in the history of German skiers. Who was your idol when you were growing up? Um, it was excellent Swindal, for sure. He was a great skier, and you're putting down some great moves today. How are you enjoying this Taos track? Uh, it's nice. It's not so easy. Um, yeah, the snow is pretty difficult, and there are deep tracks. So, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. Excellent. Sam, when we think of Belgium, we don't normally think of great alpine ski races, but you are skiing great today. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's... I mean, we don't have the biggest mountains in Belgium, uh, but yeah, grew up in Austria, learned to ski there, and uh, that's why I guess I'm doing kind of well today. Is this your first time to New Mexico? This is my very first time to New Mexico. Well, I'm sure the governor would love to hear what you think of it. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying myself out here. I'm loving it. It's a great experience, first time World Pro Ski Tour. Uh, and now I gotta go up, uh, go up and go against one of my friends from the from the other tour, and uh, yeah, let the better man win, I guess. Alex, I'll let you respond to that. It's going to be Belgium versus Germany. What do you have to do to beat Sam today? Yeah, yesterday as I uh, said, um, he's one of my favorite, and yeah, now he is here in the uh, small final, and yeah, we have to ski pretty fast, and it will be a good battle. Well, you're both skiing great. So Taos, New Mexico, let's have a nice round of applause for Sam and Alex as they go back up to the top. And may the best man win. Back to you, Clarky and Uncle E. Yeah, E, we're hanging out with the governor. She's going to stay with us for a while as we stage the women for their first round of the semifinals. Got any favorites, Governor? Yep. Molson, uh, look, Norby? I, I just want to do this. I mean, uh, Molson's doing great work. Same number of women as men. You know, in 1977, when I was looking at ski teams, there were no women. So this is incredible. Same money. Same, Same money, money, baby. And the biggest purse, guys. Let's biggest talk about what's going on here. In the history of the sport here. Woo! Right here. All so, right, Randy started the cadence for him. The first run, Molson on the red, Norby on the blue. Out on track, Norby gets a strong start over Molson. Down the pitch they go, Norby with the edge. Molson trailing, now gets twisted big time, banging off the ruts is Molson, as Norby runs wide, coming to the top jump, touching down, Norby out in front, Molson trying to settle in there as Norby taking advantage of the top part of the course. Here comes Paula Molson now, with a freight train along, but that blue course goes straighter there, but we know what happens on the bottom of the red course. It's a closer, sorter run to the finish line. Norby out in front. Here comes Molson off the bottom jump. Touches down. Here comes the advantage on that red course side. It's going to be close across the line. Wow. Molson there first with the advantage of point one, one, eight. Can't blink your eyes that quick. No, that was, so Molson, that, that's the, the classic example of I'm going to hold on strong and stick to my game, not worry about who looks like she's in front of me. So uh, your thoughts on that race? Uh, you know, if you didn't know, how she skis and what you're looking for, you would have assumed she would not have won that race. And we got to remind folks, these are one one hundred one thousandth of a second. So it is faster than a blink Red of an eye. Ready. They are Blue moving ready. and very close. That's it. So we saw Kaya Norby. Now you're going to see sister Tuva Norby who won the tour a couple years ago going up against U.S. team member Trisha Mangan. Sun's out, guns out. Here we go. So Norby gets a little bit of a jump, but Mangan gets right after alongside her. Down the pitch they go. Looks like a little bit of an edge. Uh, too close to call right now. Heading for the buck. Looks like Mannion starting to pull away. Put the skis back down on the floor. Ground. Norby drops into her tuck. It stood up a little bit. Hard landing up there. And get out in front. Does it make the turn? She's going to grab the bullet in the head. Go 
Through the alley, here comes Norby on the blue red course side, making the turn. Norby getting bounced around, back in the tails of his skis. Man, get out in front. This is where it all turns around real quick here. Norby trying to make it up here on the bottom of the red. Across the line, they're going to go. It's going to be oh, is... Norby. No, man, again with a 0 one eight. 0.018 win for Mangin. Strong, holding on to the blue. That's pretty nice, Governor, that they're paying attention to all the technique uh, talk you gave them, huh? Is that what it was? It was that, that early morning, gave them all the rules of the game and some hot tips. Here's how you become From good. The intermediate skier. Yeah, Mangan last year, she had three crashes over the course of two days, some violent ones, but she has some good results as well. Look at that, the body part across the beam, you learn that in training camps, reach, reach, reach. Wow, that was closest yeah. race of the day. 0 0.018. So that's the nature of the beast. Hey, we want to thank Mazda, the CX-50 and the CX-90. They're here on site. Go check them out. Maybe open up the door, get inside, stay warm. And also, CB Sports. Old CB Vaughn back in the 60s created the jackets. I'm guessing at one point in your life, Michelle, you had a CB jacket. I have no doubt. I think that I was wearing the first down jacket ever made uh, in New Mexico. You got one size, and then by the end of it, you were just in duct tape 20 right. years later. Uh, okay, so true or false, the down jacket as we know it now, the puffy, was created on a chairlift by a blanket by one Klaus Obermeyer in 1947. True no or false? I have no doubt, true, and I have no doubt I was wearing an Obermeyer <laughs> jacket. Yes, that's how the puffy was created. A blanket was taken off of Klaus's bed, Ooh, and he put it on... Uh, here. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh. Wait a minute. A little Are present. Do the gift for the governor. Oh, Chris awesome. Neary from CB Sports presenting the governor with a beautiful yeah. CB pullover. Oh, we're, we're able to do this probably as a blanket. <laughs> we're going to put that on you. We're going to yeah. change out this beautiful UPS brown Gucci into a... <laughs> no, it's God dang sale. Aha. Uh -huh. uh -huh. God dang sale. I love it. But you got a CB we're going to try on awesome. when you come back for the next uh, next round. Are we taking a small break? We're taking a small break. We'll get back with the men's round of four, and uh, we'll, we'll find the, the, uh, the governor in her new CB outfit.
okay if he slips? Clark's got to come down the banners and then we move to the side. Right? Yep. Rolled up and then pull the tail, pull the gates. Barrett seems to think. What time is this? Uh, We are ready for the men's final four. It's going to be Raphael Hasser, Reto Schmidiger, and then Sam Mez against Alexander Schmid. We're joined by the governor of this beautiful state, New Mexico, Michelle Grisham. Michelle, I understand you just mentioned your 12th generation that you know of, yep. New Mexicoian. Yep. Yep. How, do you, how do you say <laughs> New that? New Mexican. New Mexican. New Mexican. That makes sense. 
Yeah. You add, a little, you, you add a little Spanish in there, I think. You're I have a hard time it. spelling spell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that look. And she's she's shifted gears into the CB. How's it feeling? Oh, very nice. Feels really good. Real nice. I'm gonna ski better now. Okay, skiing better. Okay, Schmidiger. Talking to CB. Look at the big bibs. Yeah, Sponsor those are, today. Those look good. Okay, so this is we've got. Four countries represented here, Belgium, Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. We're going to start things off with Raphael Hazer, newcomer to the game from Austria. He's 26 years young. He's going to go up ready. against Reto Smittiger, who ready. had great success in the first part of the season and last part of the season last year. Kevin Clark will be giving the race call. Here we go. Out on track they go. Smittiger getting a really strong start over Hauser, but we said Hauser poured on. Through the rut they go, getting the ski into that rut early so you can get some energy out of it. Down the pitch is still Schmidinger, defending champion here. Taos touching down first. Schmidinger getting it back to the ground, settling in now. Here comes Hauser. We've seen him pour it onto the bottom before. He's on that quicker red course, but out in front now. Schmidinger stretched it along on the blue course side. Into the turn they go. Schmidinger still has the advantage. Hauser trailing. Can he make up any time? It gets quicker right here. Here comes Hauser. Schmidinger looks like he's going to get to the line first. Across he goes. Schmidinger winning the first of two runs. A point one six two for Reto. Unbelievably fast. God. Schmidinger does get the. No. So Schmidinger yep. gets the win. Point one six two over Hauser. Back to the top we go. Next Red pair, Sam ready. Mays and Alex Schmidt. Yeah, Mays, newcomer to the game. Schmidt as well. Battle of Belgium versus Germany. Schmidt on the left-hand side. Mays on the right-hand side. Off and running. They go. Pretty even start. Dropping down the pitch. Looks like the German has a little bit of an advantage. A little bit choppy up there in the top. It's putting a ski in the rut early. Sam Mays. is getting tossed everywhere yeah. there, Kev. Schmidinger now. Out Schmidt, excuse me, out front now. Pulling away, the German looking strong on the blue course side, but we've seen Sam Mays pour oh. on wild things on that blue course through the money side. Super low and aerodynamic, and is tucked off the jump first. Touching down, wide and wild. Here comes Mays trying to close the gap. This is just the first of two runs. The German with the win by .464. Did you see the amount of air Schmidt got off that bottom air? It's almost like he popped. He landed right next to the rut on that gate and was able to make it down lean and mean. Once again, Gov, you're teaching them everything they need yeah. to know and they're listening. I'm worried that maybe some of that tossing in the air was the see, having them see me ski earlier <laughs> this morning. Looking at the replay here. Look at Schmidt. Oh, right that one man, ski he was just bounced around. Good thing that turn is almost non-existent there. It's really a straight gate. Fought his way through there. People thought maybe he missed it, but it's there's not yeah, enough turn here, right so back. it could be deceiving as they go through that second. We're gonna go back to the top to get the women's second run in the semifinals underway to determine who's gonna move into the championship rounds and the consolation rounds. So I ask, uh, well, I have this opportunity, Michelle Grisham, um, how many terms have you been in office? Uh, I am in my second, and we have term limits, so this is, I'm done, which is sad in just under three years. That's the nature of the beast. You know, I see looking over there, that's that's uh, Franz Weber. He's wondering when he can get his autograph from the governor. <laughs> you know, speaking of the governor, he is dear friends with uh, that uh, guy, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Franz always brought Arnold to the resort of Squaw Creek during the celebrity events. And so well, and that guy's Arnold kind of a big deal right there. And a huge climate change champion. And he's been leaning in in any number of issues. Uh, I'm a fan. Because he's your neighbor. He's my neighbor. <laughs> That's right. Such a good commercial this year. Hey, look at this. We're ready to race. Paula Moulton is up top with uh, Miss Tuva Norby. And, excuse me, Kaya Norby. And Paula has the advantage by how much? Her advantage is a narrow margin, point one one eight. Kaya was leading that run. Paula ready. turned it around. Now Kaya has a chance on that red course side. It appears to be developing more energy, a little bit quicker out of track. They go, Moulton get the advantage with that built into the start doors. Through the top pitch, Norby trying to stay high, stay clean, not get bounced around as Moulton starts to Stretch out the advantage on the blue side. The American looking strong off the jump. Don't discount Norby as she drops down in her bullet. Molson looking strong, pulling hard into the turn. She goes with a significant advantage over Kaya Norby. One of the two sisters down in her bullet. Really powerful. It's going to be 
Molson with the advantage and a strong one she has. Norby's got to close the gap. This is the first of two runs. Norby knows they'll get the switch, but it's going to be Paula Molson crossing the line first with the advantage of a 1 2 8 5. So maximum differential on that run. And on she goes into the finals. Paula Molson, Norby will go down in the battle for third and fourth. Well, Molson, excellent work, young lady. You had carried that energy from the World Cup finals over in Europe. Nice effort there. Now we're going to shift it on over, see who she will join. It's going to be Trisha Mang. And will she join fellow teammate Trisha or another Norba, Norby? sister. Well, Tuva, two years ago, was a tour champion. Trisha Mangan had nice success last year and a couple of crashes as well. This is for all the marbles to make it into the finals. Here we go. Down on track they go. Narrow margin. Mangan had a 0-1-8. Cannot see the difference in the opening of the doors. She's over on the blue course side. Is, is Norby go, moves over to the blue, excuse me. Down the pitch they go. Trish Mangan and Tova Norby. Norby out in front, pulling away. Norby doing a good job. As we work the bottom part of the pitch. Grabbing the bullet, heading for the finish line. Norby putting a hammer down over Mangan now in the second run. So your champion from two years ago, Tuva Norby. Little skis are running well for her today. Norby looking fast, feeding across the line. She goes with the win and on. She will go into the finals to face Paula Moulton. Yeah, Tuva, nice job. And Trisha Mangan, you're going into the small final there. And we're going to take a small break, come back with th some thoughts from the governor, Miss Michelle Grisham. Be back with the men in just a minute. Thank you. Hey, thanks to everybody in this amazing Taos, New Mexico crowd. I'm here with our two finalists, and it's going to be Paula versus Tuva. Paula, we'll start with you, and you were just talking about what a huge effort it is in a cardiovascular fashion on this course today. Yeah, I think I have a bit of a disadvantage in that I live at 1,000 vertical feet, and we're at like 10. <laughs> It's pretty high up here, yeah. uh, and so is the standard of ski, ski racing. And Tuva, you just came through into the finish area with that beautiful trademark smile of yours. You are having a super day, aren't you? I am. I'm uh, surprising myself, and it's really fun to see that I can be competitive with all the girls that are in the big World Cup. So, really fun day. <laughs> and you've got a very difficult final coming up against Paula, who's skiing a lightning fast today. Yeah, and she got podiums in the World Cup this year, so we'll see what we pro tour skiers can do about her. <laughs> You're having a great year, Paula. What would a victory mean to you today to cap off uh, your season? Um, I'm just happy to be here. I think Tuba's a great competitor. Um, I think she proves that sometimes abstinence is key, key when it comes to ski <laughs> racing, so sometimes the more time you take off, the faster you get. So I'm just happy to be here competing with Girls that know how to smile and have fun. <laughs> All right, come on, Taos, New Mexico. Let's have a nice round of applause for our two finalists on the women's side as they go back up to the top for the big final. All right, the men are gathering at the top. Ralph Pauzer and Reto Spinninger, Sam Mays, and Alex Anders Schmidt will be the four racers trying to determine who's going to move into the finals. 
we were just talking with uh, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham, and she said, this is exactly what my office desk doesn't look like. <laughs> Energy drinks, a tough shed, piggy bank, and yeah, you're Meister. Meister. That's not really what happens at the governor's desk, is it? <laughs> but I'm happy to do that for just a short while. <laughs> exactly. Positioned perfectly. It's all about the show. Now, I understand. So, Michelle Lujan Grisham, that's how your, 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 your full name, name yep. your maiden name, you are the first... Governor Democratic, of Democratic Governor. Women, woman, Hispanic woman. governor in the country. Fabulous. High five right there. Yes. In New Mexico, Frank, let me give a shout out to my uh, predecessor, Governor Susana Martinez, first Republican Hispanic governor in the country. So New Mexico, two firsts. Awesome. That is beautiful. It is awesome. Un poquito espanol. Uh, hablo uh, español un muy poquito, un muy, poquito. muy, muy poquito. It helps to say that, un muy poquito, because when you say un poquito, then a lot of times we'll just start <laughs> they'll just start rallying so us. Fast. Like, time out, slow it down. And I, I should know Spanish. Uh, my father was completely bilingual. I'm a product of that generation where your parents didn't think it was important for you to be bilingual. I got a joke for you. Right. What, when you speak four languages... Is it in Spanish? <laughs> See. So tell me when to wait, laugh. Wait, okay, so when you speak four languages, what are you? Multilingual. When you speak three, what are you? Uh, tres leches. Tres leches. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that three milks? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's trilingual if you speak two. They told me this was going to be fun. So I hope we're all my, doing My that. job is to keep the F-U in fun. That's right. Okay. So when you speak two languages, you are? Bye. When you speak one, you are? Uno. American. <laughs> That's it. It's so, just crazy. Uh, so I'm not going to get on your show anymore. <laughs> let's, let's talk about what Ernie Blake did uh, here at oh the yeah. resort for the Hispanic community. There's a guy on the staff, Tomas, that is, grew up skiing here. Mm -hmm. and, the, and Ernie, he told us Ernie put together the opportunity for these kids to come up and ski for free if they helped a little bit of, of, about the resort. Ernie Blank created the best ski school programs, I believe, in the country and was the first person to recognize that this sport could be a family sport for every New Mexico family. And he leaned in to Hispanic families, but make no mistake, we also boast at one of our resorts uh, the fastest Native American skier in the country. Who oh, just got inducted into the Ski and Snowboard Hall of Fame on Saturday night. That's correct. Yes. Look at you. So uh, that is all the legacy of Ernie Blake, and it is, it is astounding. And uh, New Mexico, frankly, I learned to ski in an Ernie Blake ski school. Yeah. Oh, Ross sorry. Anderson was his name, by the way, who took the... Uh, the uh, introduction to the Hall of Fame, he gave a great speech. He gave all sorts of props to this specific area and said if it wasn't for Talos and the people of this area, he would not be where he is. It's come, and I, I agree with him. And we want to do more. And frankly, uh, in, in uh, Ernie Blake's name and memory, that legacy carries on now uh, in uh, the B Corp Corporation and the Towski Valley. And I'm really proud of their footprint lack thereof, and the work that they're doing to lift up New Mexico families. Yeah, big Fantastic. thanks to Lewis Bacon for making that Lewis happen Lewis Bacon here. is a visionary who saw the potential that Ernie saw and didn't want to have any lack of progress and investment here. We have $250 million of infrastructure money from the state making its way into our ski resorts. That's Come to Taos. Yeah. Come to Taos. Come to Taos. All right, small break here, then back with the racing, the men's small final. Excuse me, the men's round of four. We'll figure out who's going to the final right after this. One minute, guys.
And our gentlemen, our studs from four different countries, are locked and loaded up in the gate two at a time. Raphael Hauser from Austria, the 26-year-old, against Reto Schmidiger. Reto has a point one six two advantage, so his gate, the red one, is going to open up earlier than Hauser. It's going to be a blink of an eye. Hello, everyone. Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark and Michelle Luan Grisham, the governor. We are blessed to have her here in the mix. You enjoying yourself? I'm having a fantastic day. Start to finish. We'll use some racing language. Were you around these parts after that giant wind squall knocked down all the trees just to the right of our screen? I was not, but we were talking about that. Some of those trees were 250 years old and just snapped in half with that cold and then automatic uh, giant wind. Yeah, that was then. This is now. Schmidiger from Switzerland, the 31-year-old on the right-hand side. Hasser, newcomer to the game, the 26-year-old from Austria. Kevin Clark's going to bring you the live call. Here we go. Here we go with the cadence. Back in the tails of skis. Does Hauser everything stop? The defending champion, Reto Schmidinger, back in the tails of the ski. Schmidinger go. He gets to jump with that advantage down to pitch. He go, but Hauser doesn't give away any quarter at the top. Hauser's right there with him down to pitch. They go. Schmidinger maybe has a little bit of an edge. Hauser pounding away in the blue course side. Schmidinger falls behind now into the first bump. Hauser gets a little bit twisted around. Schmidinger knows that he's got that quicker course at the bottom, so he's going to stay focused on his course, get through the alley. Hauser goes through the turn, drops into his bullet, pulling away on the blue course side, then into the next turn. Watch Schmidinger come back as they make their way to the turn. Here it goes, gets really quick right here, right alongside Schmidinger. Hauser out front, though, but the Austrian crosses first, gets the win over Schmidinger, the first of two second run, on he goes. Nice job by Hosser, the Austrian. When you show up and you have no expectations in a game you've never played, it sure is nice. A nice feeling to make it to the finals. Okay, so another two guys that have not been anywhere near the finals of the World Pro Ski Tour, Sam Mays from Belgium and Alexander Schmid from Germany. The German Blue is on the right-hand side, taking a peek Blue on your screen ready. right now. The Belgium competitor, Mays, on the left-hand side. Who has the advantage? Here we go, Schmidt with the advantage. Now his doors will open first by 4.64 seconds. But boy, Sam Mays got a powerful start. Schmidt didn't get the jump like he needed to get down the pitch they go. He has that quicker red course. Oh, he's wild, he's all over the place, gets set out of the rut. At the bottom, first jump, it's going to be Mays touching out first to Belgian, stretching out on the blue course side. He knows he needs to really work an advantage. Through the alley he goes. The Belgian drops down to his tuck, clean and smooth, trying to get some energy while staying aerodynamic. Making the turn, he's out in front. Mays has got enough right now to get it done. Over Schmidt, into the finish. She goes on to the finals for his first time here in the Pro Tour. The Belgian winning it. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Michelle Luan Grisham, are you going to be handing the big checks to these guys? Do you I? Think? Do I get to hand the big, I get to look at you, it first and then give them over? <laughs> exactly. You either get to do it or you don't. One of the two is going to happen. I'm going I'm to say don't. <laughs> I don't get to do yeah, it. Yeah, that's John Franklin right there. He never, never wears a hat because he's got great hair. He will be the deciding factor whether you and, get to. And, and let's make it clear, biggest purse. Big, it's a large purse. It's... I need that purse. B bigger purse than you've ever owned. <laughs> like 20 yeah, grand for first doing place. pretty well. <laughs> got a good economy. We give them, by the way, it's 20 grand in nickels, by the way. <laughs> you didn't have to carry it on the Ski plane. Down with this. <laughs> that is it. We're having a great time here at Tyler Ski Valley. If you folks that are watching online on Facebook, we welcome you in. And uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll be on all day tomorrow, but we have the finals and the small finals coming up. So let's see, two, four, eight races remaining. We do invite you all. No matter whether you're here, there, or anywhere, to go onto the Facebook page and register for a brand new set of peak skis. One pair being given away each day. Each day, I've skied on the 98s, the 104s, and the 110s, and they are phenomenal skis. Thank you, Bodie Miller and company, for putting those things uh, up for freebies. We'll take a small break and come back with the ladies' small final, followed by the men's small final, and then the men's final as well. Taos, New Mexico, I am here with our men's finalists. It's come to this, and it's two World Pro Ski Tour rookies. But they are not rookies when it comes to World Cup ski racing. Rafael Hauser, you had a good uh, season and a good career 
in World Cup, and you are really bringing those skills to Taos this weekend, aren't you? Yeah, my season was pretty good, pretty consistent, but hope to do, to do even better here. Excellent. And Sam, congratulations on your first ever World Pro Ski Tour final. Uh, just describe how much fun it's been uh, from start to finish. We haven't finished yet, but uh, it's been a long day for you. Have you been enjoying it? Uh, it's awesome out here. I mean, I've said this a couple of times already, but it's very relaxed compared to the World Cup Tour. It's like you come out here, you have fun. Everyone skis with one ski, you know? It's like, it's that the event just flows and it goes how it goes, right? There's not a strict plan or whatever. It's just you go up, the guys are ready, you go start. And I love that. And I think we're all enjoying it out here. And it's so nice that you guys have us here. And it's awesome. Well done indeed. All right, Raphael, I know you're not going to give away too many secrets, but I just got to uh, say to you what a fantastic comeback you had against Reto. And what did you learn from that that you're going to take into the final? Well, just staying patient no matter what uh, the other guy does and then just uh, put your thing uh, to the finish. All right, guys. Well done indeed. Taos, New Mexico. Let's have a nice round of applause for our men's finalists as they go up to the top. And we will be crowning the Taos champion in just a few minutes' time. So stick around. That. You want to verify that, that we are doing women small and big and then men small and big? I think on, I heard him say on TV that you're doing Don't tighten up yet, Trisha. Women small, okay. men small. Not yet. Not yet. Trisha Kaya. Trisha and Kaya up top. This is the small final. Trisha and Kaya will be starting things off. Then we'll have Paula and Tuva in the finals. And then we'll do the, the, the men. So uh, eight races left. Thanks so much for tuning in the World Pro Ski Tour. Uncle E alongside.
Kevin Clark, who's been doing this for decades and always a pleasure to be by your side. Great racing going on today. So the battle for third and fourth, Kaya Norby and Trish Mangan stand behind the start gates. Norby over the red course side, ready to go. The wind whipping up there. Rugged job being the starter. Hanging out all day long up there. Randy Patson and Matt Rogers in the yellow coats. Closing Blue the doors, ready. keeping things moving along. Here we go, the cadence begins. Five yellow lights and go to green. This is the first of two runs and the consolation round. Ooh. Down on the pitch they go. Good even start by both these pros. Good clean high line, put your foot against the rut. Wobble on the blue course side for Mangan as they drop down the pitch. Snorby right there with her off the bottom up. Looks like the American going to touch down by about a half a skis like with the advantage on the blue course side. Into the turn they will go with the oh, drone oh, oh, following. Oh, as they make that turn, we know the blue course get quicker, but it turns around. Norby stays focused on her own course. The right footer into the jump. Looks like Mankin has a bit of a gap as she touches down. Norby gonna straighten out these last three gates. Try to close the gap, it's gonna be the American at the line first with the advantage going to Trisha Mankin. Two, four, four for Mankin. Two, four, four for Mangan. After that air on the bottom, Mangan got a little twisted, but able to hold on strong, so Mangan this much closer by 0.24 to taking third place. They'll go back up top and do one more run, swap it around. Let's go on with this is the first run of two for the finals. Go. Paula Moltzen, who walked away victorious this ready. time last year. She's Blue going up against ready. Tuva Norby. It's Mangan on the right, Norby on the left. So Moltzen and Norby Moltzen, coming at me. you now. Norby on the red course side. Tuva gets the jump over Moltzen. Look at her go. First run looks like the. Norby out in front, Molson trailing as they go into the room, gets a little bit launched out of the skis. Molson touches down wide and wild. It's anybody's race. The first run of the finals for the women here. Dallas, the World Championship, 20 grand up for grabs. First of two runs, a little bit of a bobble for for Molson as they make their way to the turn. Norby out in front, tour champion two years ago. She's got this one in control. We know what happens right here. Touching down, here's the advantage going away. It's gonna be Molson, the first of two runs with the win by. 448.448. So strong effort by Norby up top. She knew what she had to get done on that red course side. When Moltson turned on the afterburners, pumps a fist and heads out of the corral to go back to the top for the final run of the day for the women. So Moltson had a couple of uh, a wild cowboy type of bucks up top, but again, able to stick with it and takes it by 0.44 over Norby. We'll get going with the men's small final and the men's final when we return. A car like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. Deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. For more than half a century, 
SACO has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer, and of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals, always served ice cold. When anticipation Clock's counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. moment. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racers ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow beat my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open and keeps you in it. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity that marks the American West come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. Created by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana. With new thinking. Unbridled passion and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. They thought I was mad. They were right. Okay, boys, you're good? You're good? Clear, clear? So. All right. All right, gearing up for the men's small final into the men's final, then followed by the second run of the ladies. So we're down to the nitty gritty here on day two of three at Tao Ski Valley. Welcome everybody, this is the World Pro Ski Tour World Championship, stop three of three. I'm Uncle Lee alongside Kevin Clark. Your thoughts so far on a fantastic sun-filled, blistering fast race day. Man, these young World Cup guys have come through to find themselves at the top of the Steps at the podium here. We got to determine who's going to be on which step in these next two runs. And it's Bluebird Day. Clouds whipping by. Gina Peak as we get them staged up. Red O'Schmittinger starts off on the red course side. And Alexander red. Schmidt. That's a, this is going to be a tongue twister. Schmidt Schmittinger. Schmidt and Schmittinger, Schmidt yeah. So We're going to go with Red O and Alexander. Hey, that's it. Schmidt, the German, 29 race. years young. Obviously now a fine ski racer, also a customs officer. Red O Schmittinger, Swiss, 31 years young. Ready to rock and roll, off and running. Out on track they come. The first of their two runs. The consolation rounds. 4,500 bucks for third. 2,500 bucks. Looks like Alexander out front. Oh, what oh, happened there? Lordy, where'd oh, he go? Just got launched. It happened so quick. So Reto 
knows he can just coast it on in here. He's going to take away the maximum differential of a 1 0 0. So, one second advantage. Boy, I'm glad Schmidt didn't have any more fence close to him. He would have been caught in there like a gaff tuna. But, uh, yeah, Sch Schmid Schmidiger from Switzerland, he'll, uh, he'll have that second advantage. On that. Yeah, as we've been mentioning, you know, you get in the backseat, any miscalculation, it can, it can buck you off the course like a Bronco, which he just did for uh, Schmidt. So, see if we get a replay up here. They're going to pull it up, a little handshake in the finish crowd. Here we go. Alexander out in front. He's one turn. Gets, oh, there's a hole right there. There's a little hole that's developed. Yeah. Left foot stuck in that hole, and bam, it just ejected him. So, as we talk about often, getting that high edge angle early, getting that ski, let it release before you hit that hole is the key. Let it release. Okay, two newcomers to the game, an Austrian and a Belgian walk into a bar. They show up here at the top of the course, <laughs> and they're into the finals. Okay. It's going to be Raphael Hoster on the red course, the Austrian against Sam Mays, the Belgium on the left-hand side. So Franz Weber gave us some ready. insight into Hauser. His Luke sister ready. raced his World Cup for Austria, and his father used to race for World Cup. Here we a go. Imagine that, a couple of Austrian racers. Huh? How about that? Out on track, they go. Oh, strong start in Luke Course side. Course. Mays gets the jump over Hauser, but we've seen this Hauser pour it on the bottom, but Mays is incredible out of the start here for a rookie into the jump he goes touching down all oh, twisted and sideways didn't bother his feet though they kept going in the right direction Mays out front really strong in their first of two runs for the finals here at Tiles the World Championship 20 grand up for grab for one of these two guys look at Mays or Belgium putting a hammer down on the Austrian into the bottom jump we go Mays was 11th at Palisades he's looking like he's looking for the big payday here at Tiles across the line he goes with a big win after a full Mays. World Cup season, Max. yeah, Mays, just a full differential of a second there, putting the, the, the gauntlet down over Hauser, so work cut out for the Austrian. Let's get, a, if we can, a replay on that start, Uncle Lee. That would be cool to watch, you guys. Let's see if we can pull that back up, because that's where it all happened for Sam. Came out of those doors super strong and super quick, reacting to the opening of the doors as we took take that drone shot. Yeah, there's a reverse angle, literally. That's really hard. Yep, <laughs> it's not easy to do. Going back so up, yeah. here's a peek back, and you see Sam. Look on the left-hand side. Just flying out by almost right, a... Just he's fly. half a gate in the second gate ahead of time. Yeah, I just timed it perfect. Well, yeah. Let's, let's show it again. So these new guys figuring out the rhyme with the reason. So three yellows to go. They go back on the tails that are skis for an instant. And he just gets a super quick start. Really strong oh, skate step is what I saw there, too. He immediately has that, that left foot ski on edge and really powered out of there. So back to the ladies we go. It's going to be Trish Mangan with the advantage over Kaiser Norby. So Norby switches courses. Trish on the red course. Kaya on the blue. Yeah, so Megan last year, her first race, she had a uh, she had a crash, place? ended up in uh, fourth place yeah, in her first race. See if she can increase that to third. We're gonna take a small break. The ladies are up there. We'll get them loaded. Be back in just a minute. Commercial break here, real quick. Less than a minute. Load them up. Eleven red, thirteen blue. <laughs> Good. No, that's, that, that was for something else. <laughs> Personal. Seem to bother that hole. I know that's why I think Barrett freaked out. All right, we're gonna we're gonna share that replay of the guy going off the course again, and then we're gonna go to the women. Oh, scratch that. They're in the gate. Um, 
Would you look at that? Kai Norby versus Trisha Mangan. They are loaded in there. One race will decide who walks away in third place. So Mangan's door is open first, but it's Norby there with a super strong start to put the pressure on at the top of the hill. Norby puts her ski in that rut, riding it around. Mangan trails now as they drop their way down to the pitch into the first jump. Norby looking strong here. She touches down. And it's the battle for third and fourth place. Norby dropped into the tuck of the blue course side. She knows she needs to stretch it out as much as she can because the red gets quicker at the bottom. Norby out in front looking strong at a blue course for the final run for the battle for third and fourth here today at Taos, the World Championships of Pro Ski Racing. That battle for third and fourth, 60, 4,500 bucks and 2,500 bucks on the line at the line. Oh, Trish gets stood up there across the line. Goes Norby. With the win by 0.159 for Norby. Kaya Norby taking third place here. We missed you in the last few races around the, the snow globe, but you came back strong, took a podium spot, and Miss Trisha Mangan, great season you've had, and nice to have you here in fourth place. Now let's set the stage. We got another Norby sister up there, Tuva. She's on the red course, right hand side looking up, representing Norway, and Paula Moltsen, born on the 4th of July, 1994, representing Prior Lake, Minnesota. The pride of Buck Hill. Paula Moulton has the lead right, by .448. Her Great gate race. will open first. Great in less than 40 race. seconds, we'll Blue crown ourselves race. a champion here at Taos Ski Valley. So, four yellow lights, about two yellow lights to go back in the tails of the skis, trying to time it out on track. She comes with that advantage built in of a 448. Wow. Gets a little bit twisted as Norby tries to stay focused on her own course. Knows she may have some advantage at the bottom, but it's Paula Moulton pulling away. Strong lead off the top pitch into the first jump. She's got a command of this. The final run here at Taos. The American Paula Moulton on the podium in the World Cup, going to the top step of the podium. We got to finish the run. Norby falling behind as Moulton hammering away in the panels on the blue side with the jump to go. Over the jump in good shape. Skis back on the snow. It's going to be Paula Moulton at the line to win today. Unbelievable competition, Uncle Lee. Dun, dun, dun. $20,000 richer. And a big hug goes out to second place, Tuva Norby, earning $6,300. And that's right. There's a 10% rule at the bar tonight, Paula. <laughs> Uh, so good safe racing by all the ladies. That's what we like to see. Great course set by Barrett Stein and company. And the yellow coats doing a bang up job. But we have men's third and fourth and first and second to decide. We're going to take a small break and come back with the dudes. Great racing action here for the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships Taos Ski Valley style.
home, obviously. Did they do interviews? Right up to that, so you get rid of those reps out of our Literally start. Documenting the weekend. And just like start with a clean shot, is my like guess. Is it? Uh, so I, think, I think they should move the camera. Well, we were, well, we were trying to get caught. No. Okay, we're good, Randy. Got all four here. Uh, I would. I, I would. Randy? No. We got him. No, not no. yet. Oh. No, he would, yes. he would just come right up to it where we've got the, the holes from the ruts. He could just refresh that whole area that's right at the camera line. So I think if he brings the camera up, we'd be better off. Is this one moving as much? We really don't have any other way to. We'd be you right can close them. The Go ahead. Tomas. And it all comes down to this. World Pro Ski Tour, third stop of this fantastic 2024 season. Started in Aspen, went to Bear Valley in Central California. And now we're here in Taos Ski Valley. Uncle E alongside longtime legend of this sport, Kevin Clark. And we're down to two races. We're going to start with the small final. Reto Schmidiger up against Alexander Schmid, who blew out of the first run. Now he's up against the ropes, Kevin. So put his foot in that hole up there and just stood him right up and opted to ski out and rather than try to save that unfortunate mistake. So he'll be moving over to that red course side is Reto. Stands behind the doors on the blue. Who's going to take away the third place and fourth place positions with one run to go? Then the finals, Hauser and Sam Hass will be up after these two. 
Hey, big props goes out to the entire event staff from the course workers, the yellow coats, yourself included, Kevin, who got here. When did you get here a week ago? I got here Saturday. You brought the snow from the East Coast, didn't you? Well, I left my wife with the snow at the East Coast. <laughs> my yard was brown on Friday when I left, and Sunday it was 39 inches of snow in my door yard. You left her with a broken shovel. Oh nice my God, job. An electric okay. snowblower. Okay. <laughs> Reto Schmidinger will be on the left hand side. He's on the blue course. He represents Switzerland. Alexander Schmidt, the 29 year old from Germany, has a second disadvantage. Our starters getting things going. It's gonna go from red down to green. Here goes Schmidiger first, followed by Schmidt oh, off and running. Track he goes, drop it down, clean and smooth. Got a nice touch for the snow. So tomorrow's GS, but right now we're settling up things on the slalom side. Schmidiger just really doing a good job, keeping in the rut. Top of the turn, so smooth as he touches down and grabs the board, working the midsection of the course. The German trying everything he can do to close the gap, but it looks like it's all Redo as they make the turn. Knows it. Alexander is going to have a little bit of an edge on the red, but I don't think it's going to happen now. Red out front, got to go over that last jump. We've seen it present some trouble, troubles, but not for Schmidinger today. It's going to be all red -o. At the line, across the line, he will go. It to the third step of the podium, and Alexander down to the fourth. Hip, hip, hooray for red -o. Walking away with 4,500 bucks American cash. Nice job, buddy boy. And Schmidt, you're taking fourth, 2,500 bucks. A fine payday there. And then there was one left. Two new dudes to the tour. It's going to be Sam Mez. He's from Belgium. Right. And then Good Raphael job, Hasser. He's from Tyrol, Austria. The 26-year-old newcomer to the game. We'll crown Good ourselves a new champion yep. here. Hasser on the blue side. Mez on the red side. One second advantage to Mez. His gate drops. Here we go. Yeah. Up a second ahead. Good Mez course. with that strong advantage. Diving down through the ruts. Does Hauser have anything for him? Mays clean and smooth, making it look easy through the rut. On waiting the skis, they just float between turns. Sam out front, the pro from Belgium. I don't think we've ever had a pro from Belgium on the tour. And he's out in front controlling it. Blue course is gonna close the gap a little bit. Here he comes, Hauser pouring on the steam. Deep history in his family of pro ski, or ski, oh, all kinds of trouble. And he's gonna give it up there. No let's hear it for Sam Mays from Belgium at the top step on a podium. Hands in the air, fist pumping $20,000. Richard Oakley, I'm gonna head out to the podium. Do it, baby, get out there. The sun's coming out for our award ceremony. Sam Mays smiles for miles. Look at that, Sam earning 20,000 bucks in the title of the World Pro Ski Tour World Championships in Taos Ski Valley. Having a peek back, you can see Hazer having to put all of everything he has on the line. He did that and off the course he went. Second place ain't so bad though. First runner up, $6,300. Stick with us here. We've got ourselves a great check presentation. Sun's out. We'll have the, the Corbell Champagne being popped and uh, names are getting put on those big checks. Kevin Clark is gonna be throwing those checks out. Great stuff all the way around. We'll take a small break, come back with the awards ceremony. Thanks for tuning in. I'm gonna plug this in while we go down. I'm gonna leave this plugged in while we're... Good stuff.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it only happens once a day, and it's the awards ceremony. Great racing action brought to you by Kevin Clark, and he gets to do the awards as well. Take it away, Clarky. All right, thanks, Uncle Lee, my co-announcer. What a great day of ski racing. It's been Bluebird. These folks at Talos have stepped up big time. Dave Norton, your crew here is absolutely amazing. Cat drivers, yellow coats. Let's hear it for Talos. Yeah, getting it done here. A lot of snow to move. 40, 50 inches of snow when we arrived here. I'm plowing around on my Mazda, just getting it done. Those guys got it done on the hill. Super glad to be back here. All right, let's start with the ladies. In fourth place today, from the U.S. Ski Team, Trish Mangan. Come on up, Trish. Big smiles on all these ladies and one of two sisters. Kaya Norby, come on up, Kaya. Third place with $4,500 for Kaya. And now, in second place, the tour champion two years ago, Tuvan Norby. So Tube's got some new boards. They seem to be running well. Not well enough to stop this gal from the U.S. Ski Team, Paula Molson. <laughs> so, first time, first step of the two days of racing, 20 grand in your pocket. What do you think? relief I think I think uh, there's pressure coming in as a World Cup skier to perform but I'm happy to have one day done I'm pretty tired I think we're all a little tired so I'm excited to go into tomorrow with hopefully a little bit more sleep and maybe a little bit less wind so what's your specialty slalom or GS in our pro format I don't know <laughs> there's no answer no answer we'll find out tomorrow let's bring up Mark from Sports Insurance to present the check. Mark DiPerno. Mark, where are you? There. And the governor. Yeah. Oh, the big check. And where's Jill from Seiko? Come on up, Jill, with the watch. Oh. Oh, wow, Paula says. Another watch. Outstanding. Yeah, good job. Let's hear it for our top four once again. The sports insurance team, Mark. You've got a good team. Thanks, Governor. All right, let's move over to the men's side of things. Well, Paula holds that $20,000 check high in the air. What a way to cap off a season. Day one. <laughs> so, let's start with fourth place here. Alexander Schmidt, come on up. Who, me? Yeah, you. Yeah, good job. Strong German group of athletes out here today. And from Switzerland, on to third place of the podium, Reto Schmidinger. So Reto back on the podium. Last year, not high up. Couple of new guys coming in here, mixing things up. From Austria, Raphael Hauser. Yeah. So, a little slow to get Gordon going and qualifying, but this guy figured it out. Right now, from Belgium, first time in the history of pro skiing, on the top step of the podium, Sam Mays. So, Sam, great day ski racing. My friend Franz Weber said he's really from Austria. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of am, yeah. I am from Austria. I, was gr I grew up in Austria. I was born in Belgium, so that's where I learned to ski, and that's, uh, I guess, what I use today that I learned to ski in Austria. Excellent. So, what do you got for the guys in GS tomorrow? Uh, I'll bring my A game, and... Uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, all good friends, and but tomorrow we're no friends again, so let's race. So what do you think about the pro format being up there with your friends? A little, little lighter atmosphere than World Cup? Yeah, it's awesome. It's, uh, 
it's a great end of the season for all of us, I think. Uh, it's coming out here, having the good weather, enjoying ourselves, racing against each other, and uh, that's what it's all about. That's a super crew, cool pro format. So, Chris Neary from CB Sports with the big $10,000 check along with the governor. I'm gonna present that check. Our official outerwear sponsor, CB Sports. Big billboard on the guys, bibs. And let's bring out Jill with the watch for the Belgium. Look at that, nice fresh new Seiko watch. Let's hear it for right now, our final four. Alexander Schmidt, Randall Schmidtinger, Raphael Hauser, and Sam Mays will be back out here tomorrow for the GS portion of this incredible World Championship weekend. $20,000 in the hand of Sam. And Hauser wants a piece of that tomorrow. So we'll settle it all tomorrow with the GS. Join us tomorrow. Let's thank the World Pro Ski Tour team. Barrett Stein, Randy Patson up there in the start, Matt Rogers, Mark, Joe, so many guys making it happen here. Lots of volunteers, the yellow coats. Let's come on up here, all eight athletes. Let's get the big group picture. like this shouldn't exist. Something this big, this luxurious, shouldn't move like a Mazda. And yet, it does. Oh my God, it sounds epic as well. This car is an SUV with bragging rights. The Free Row Mazda CX-90. For the best deal on the best shed or garage, visit toughshed.com. I pray there's no reincarnation. Nothing could equal the journey I've had. Everything else would be a boring encore. I was always exploring. Everyone said Taos was unskiable. It was certainly magnificent, but it would be a future site of a grand ski resort. I thought I was mad. They were right. 
CB Sports is a vintage ski brand that was very popular in the 80s and 90s, created by CB Vaughn, and we are fortunate enough to be able to relaunch that brand into the market in 2022. CB Sports is basically a retro vintage brand from the past being brought into the present. It's got great designs, lines, and features. It's a great old outerwear brand that's made new. In the tradition of Montana's pioneering spirit, and born of the same individualism, enthusiasm, and ingenuity, that marks the American West come the most innovative skis in skiing. Peak skis. Created by Bodie Miller in Bozeman, Montana. With new thinking. Unbridled passion and new technology that promises to forever change the ski industry. As the founders of Surefoot, Bob and Russ Shea are obsessed with creating the perfect ski boot for you because they know that a properly fitted custom ski boot will make you a better skier, whatever level you're at. At Surefoot, they've developed a process that guarantees the perfect fit for each customer, and of course, they are obsessed with the process. We have 300 experts in Surefoot on the world that all use the exact same process. Surefoot, better fitting, better skiing. For more than half a century, Seiko has been supporting athletes in their efforts to be the best. Now, we want to bring this reliable technology to anyone striving for a goal. Because we understand, a split second can change everything. Keep going forward, prospects. In general, ski racing is a pretty tough sport. Racers ready? Using my DNA vibe has allowed me to train harder, longer, and recover faster. Less days off, more time on the snow, beating my competitors. Having another option to be doing what we love and to continue to race, it just keeps the sport open, keeps you in it. The best nights start with Jägermeister. Made with 56 botanicals, always served ice cold. When anticipation Clock's counting down. Five seconds. Three, two, becomes celebration. Jägermeister. Meister the moment. Get it. 